Turkey as a minister is because of His Excellency Edgar Chagua Long. And I want to declare for those people who have been saying, no, Bomani is a bootlicker. I am the number one bootlicker for His Excellency Edgar Chagua Long. <laughs> President Gabanjevat Shana, Kushana. My president, your president, our president, Wanda. Epica Chagwa Lungu, my president, your president, our president, Wanda. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is uh, uh, your host, Mnalula Mnalula. And uh, today we have a very important discussion to have. And uh, I really hope that you guys are going to have your bundles intact because this is going to be something that has never been done. And you already know, Zeko, now we are here to break all types of records. So as you can see, today's title, or rather today's topics are very controversial. But this is what we do. We are here to educate the masses and uh, I just can't take it anymore because there has been a lot of misinformation with regards to the history of Zambian politics. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the mass psychology of politics, aka propaganda. So to all the senior citizens out there, right, we're going to take a stroll in the uh, we're going to go back in the, in the past. Basically, we're going to talk about Alice Lenshina. We're going to talk about Adamson Mushala. We're going to talk about CR1. We're also going to talk about a few other key players in the 2021 general elections, such as Laura Miti, uh, Alice Musukwa, Tamara Ngozi, Pilato, and all these people, because this is very important information. So I do recommend everybody to grab themselves uh, a jar of one liter of water, because you already know it's all about being healthy because we need healthy citizens. And uh, just like I told you, right, I told you to do a lot of research with regards to alkaline um, diets, because alkaline diets help you prevent a lot of diseases. So I really hope that you guys did your homework and you guys are going to be doing all that stuff because I've been, I've been, you know, like uh, having this alkaline diet and I feel much healthier. I feel much better. I've minimized, uh, you know, chicken, meat, and all that stuff. So it's all about health. It's all about having a very good mental state, uh, very good health, physique, and all that good stuff because it's very important. So before we jump into today's episode, right, let me talk about something which is going to be a little bit controversial. And you know me, Z Corner uses a lot of uh, artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning. And a lot of you might be wondering, saying, well, but Z Corner, why do you always have uh, bomb and Sambo's, uh, you know, name in your videos? It's pretty simple. The algorithm loves him. So if you do anything with regards to digital marketing, Facebook marketing, YouTube marketing, and all that good stuff, right? You already understand the concepts of algorithms. And, uh, you know, the algorithm loves bomb and Sambo. And, hey, we use AI and uh, machine learning. So we just have to take advantage. So... There has been a topic that me and my boss were talking about, right? And, uh, you know, we have two polarizing characters, Bowman Lusambo and Honorable Gary Nkombo. Now, a lot of you might not really know this for a fact, but these two characters are pretty much similar, but very different. They are so different that they are very similar. Muna, what are you talking about? How can Bowman Lusambo and Gary Nkombo be very similar, but be very different at the same time? You see? It's all about attributes. It's all about attributes. You see, the the way you break down a politician is uh, by his attributes. Just like the way that you break down, let's say, for example, 
by the way, let me take let me let me, let me take off the, those glasses because I look like a geek. Uh, so the way you break down a footballer is obviously by his attributes. Let me give you a, a, a very good practical example. Let's talk about Pats on Daka. If you look at the Pats on uh, the, the the attributes of Pats on Daka, right? He is, uh, you know, strong on the ball, physique, very good. Pace, very good. Uh, dribbling, mm, uh, uh, what's this? Scoring, impeccable. So all these different attributes uh, sort of determine the value and how uh, football clubs are able to use him. So now getting back to Gary Nkombo and Bowman Lusambo, right? They are very similar yet very different, but their attributes, remember the Pats on Daka example that I gave you, right? The attributes are very similar. So the way that you can decipher Bowman, Lusambo and Gary Nkombo is, Gary Nkombo is a very ethical and moral Bowman Lusambo. <laughs> but Bowman Lusambo, he would be a Gary Nkombo. Then Gary Nkombo, he would be and, uh, you know, backdoor manners and, uh, you know, just being a bootleg politician, he would be a Bowman uh, Lusambo. And haven't you found it interesting that a lot of people refer to Gary Nkombo as Mazembe and Bowman Lusambo calls, or rather people call him the bulldozer. Mazembe and a bulldozer, and those are the same things. But anyway, a lot of you are going to misconstrued this information that I'm trying to give you, but just think about attributes attributes of a politician and I'm, I'm i'm not saying that yo but gary combo uh Bobby, no 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 i'm, I'm uh, all i'm trying to say is these two politicians are very different but very similar with regards to their attributes and one is on the moral side while the other one is not very ethical and not very moral you understand so to all the people who really want to join today's uh conversation um, the link is obviously going to be in the description box below. But anyhow, getting back to today's topic. So I really hope now we should understand what I was trying to tell you with regards to how different but similar Gary Combo and Bomb and Lusambo is. I'm looking at the attributes, just the face value of the attributes alone and uh, all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm not really trying to compare, you know, like there, Shan Shan. I'm just telling you that these two characters, they are one and the same, but it's just that Bambi, then Bambi, questionable. But the, the attributes are still the same. It's more like football. You can have uh, players who've got the same attributes, but they play for different clubs and, you know, some are better at scoring and all that stuff. Plus, the algorithm does love both of these characters. If you talk about Gary Combo and Bowman Lusambo, right, the algorithm, the AI, the the ML, they all love these characters, you know, and they are so polarizing. And I just wanted to like share that with you because it's a very interesting fact. And you guys can obviously uh, give a testament to that. So anyway, talking about mass psychology, propaganda, what is propaganda? And uh, how can you use the media to have a very strong uh, message? Now, a lot of you gave us a lot of flack with regards to, you know, uh, sharing Sia One's post because uh, let me just be honest with you. Z Kone is uh, probably one of the uh, few media platforms, the only media platform that was actually live streaming uh, Sia One. Like every time Sia One would be online, right? Streaming Z Kone would be rebroadcasting in real time. Now, we got a lot of flack from that because you guys, you know, you've got like a weird way of uh, seeing things, and the way we analyze and do things, we look at statistics, data metrics the algorithm we we don't use feelings we don't use feelings we use actual data statistics numbers numbers do not lie and uh, cr1 is a very interesting character with regards to zambian politics because this polarizing character was able to do major massive things and i do remember vividly uh there was one time I think that was the Chimbakambwili broadcast where he was talking about all these crazy despicable things. That was a very interesting live stream. I'm sure you guys remember that massive live stream of CR1. We were doing the numbers. We were checking the, 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 the devices because you can really sort of uh, use metrics. You can determine 
you know, how many devices are watching a particular live stream and you can have the actual numbers. And on that particular broadcast, there was 1 million devices tuned in. And these 1 million devices had about three to four people watching in real time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is very profound. You cannot overlook such type of information. Yes, I do understand. This particular character has got questionable religious activities and practices, but we all do. We all do. Bambi mwari kwata amalomba mumanganda. Bambi Everybody has got different religious practices. Some some people are Muslims, some people are I don't know, Hindu, some are Christian. But the metric that we were using as Z corner here with regards to CR1 was the data, statistics, the metrics, the algorithm, the AI, the tracking pixels, and all that good stuff. So why am I telling you this? Packaging, propelling a message, it's very important. By the way, to all the people who really want to join us, uh, I, I posted the link. So let me post the link right now because we're going to have a very good good uh you know link so but first of all i'm giving you my monologue i'm giving you my monologue at this particular moment so yeah to other people who want to join us the link has been posted in the comment section so let me just take this time uh to pin it and i'll get back to today's uh conversation so Mukutske, by the way to all the people watching us right now kindly share this video because uh mnala is here and uh you know mnala brings the the the, the sauce the heat and uh, we usually talk about things that have, have never been, uh, you know, talked about. So, yeah, share this video. I know there's a lot of people watching me right now. I can see there's almost 700 uh, people watching us. So share this video before we get into this. Because, Lela, we're going back in the past. We're going to the times of Alice Lane. We're going to go to the times of Adamson Mushala. This is not for the 2000s. But 2000s, eh? goodbye. You know, this is some, some adult type of talking today. You know, and, and today when you come through, right, come come through correct. Because I know with regards to Alice Lenshina, I'm going to get back to CR1, right? With regards to Alice Lenshina, right, a lot of you have got the propaganda that the UNIP gave you. A lot of you have got that old propaganda that was fed into the media of back in the day. Yo, bade erishe misu, yo, Alice Lenshina, adinindo shi. Propaganda, mass psychology, the media. You get where I'm going? You understand where we're drifting to us, right? So anyway, getting back to CR1. Uh, statistics, numbers, data, algorithms, artificial intelligence, machine learning, tracking pixels. Write that down. It's very important. So you guys already know me, right? Uh, I'm a business developer. I'm a marketer. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, I help package uh products goods services and sell them you see back in the day right in two uh, well when the pf were deep in this system when the regime was running uh you know on steroids we could we didn't have the privilege of doing this because our families were you know threatened a lot of people could have lost jobs I know that good stuff. And if you go back to the history of Z Corner, right? We've been in this game since 2015, 2014. You know, I started this particular platform literally in my university hostel in the toilet. <laughs> I know that really sounds cliche, right? Because a lot of people say, you know, I, me, I'm from the bottom. Actually, I'm actually from the bottom of the bottom. You can ask the people who were around us. We started this thing a long time ago. So why were we able to uh, help CR1's message get amplified. Why did we do that? Why, we, why did we do that if we could have had a lot of backlash? If we could have had a lot of people saying, yo, Vamona. And by the way, even w our members here on Z Corner, va, va Oscar, brother Oscar, always, uh, you know, castigates me and say and keeps on saying, va Mona, we all see a wanu, yo mare tere pana ni pa Z Corner, yo mare tere pa Z Corner, iya iawe, tefya kuko parefyo. And I get it. I understand. You guys are not really talking about the numbers, the statistics, the AI, the tracking pixel, and all that good stuff. 
you know? So getting back to cr ones point, right? The reason why we were able to amplify his voice, he's got a very big platform. cr one is a giant with regards to uh, uh, conveying a message. You, you can't deny this fact. You, can't, you cannot run away from this particular fact. Whether you like it or not, he's got a very large platform, very large audience, you know? And uh, to me, it, it, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to send Ed Galungu and his cronies back to the farm. You know, now I know, yeah, it's, it's too high, but it is what it is. Banana Republic. And we said, no, 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 no. We're not going to have this. We're going to, we're not going to let this happen. If these people continue, the entrepreneurship environment in Zambia is going to dwindle. There's going to be massive lawlessness. We cannot let that happen. So what are we going to do? by any means necessary. Let's use Amatuzo to quit. And that's how we, you know, when Siawan started doing his thing, right? He's been doing his thing for the, I don't know, like since 2018, 2019, right? When I, when I first saw Siawan, I was like, this is our guy. This is our guy. And we are definitely going to amplify his voice. We're definitely, because, you know, he's got all the attributes. Remember the thing that I talked about? Attributes, right? Attributes, statistics, uh, all that good stuff. He's got everything that needs to sell the UPND's agenda. And when, when it comes to politics, there's two factions of society. There's basically three factions of society that you need to consider when it comes to politics. There's the uh, your followers, the undecided and then the not decided, you understand? So everybody, everybody that has got a political party, right? There are three types of audiences that they need to cater to. Number one, they already have staunch supporters. Like, I think you have my supporters about PF. You have supporters about PF. There's nothing that you can tell them. Nothing will change because they are staunch supporters. And then you've got the undecided voters. And then you've also got those people that need Extra, extra, extra convincing. Anyway, getting back to the undecided voters, right? This is where the job needs to be done. I'm an undecided voter. So basically we had, you know, two men political parties. We had the PF, the UPND, and the undecided voters. I'm a supporter as well, opposition. So getting back to the three types of audiences that you need to focus on with regards to any political party, right? You've got your cult uh, followers, your staunch followers. You've got the undecided followers, and you also have the followers of your opposition. So what you need to do in order for you to become popular, right? You need to convert the audience of your opponents. I'm a supporter. You need to get them on your side. And then you also need to convince the undecided followers. Now, what did CR1 do? CR1 had massive influence on undecided voters. You know, every time CR1 would do his, you know, broadcast and all that stuff, he would cons convert a lot of undecided voters. So when we talk about the 2.8, right, and this is not even about division, this is not even about dividing people saying, yo, 2.8 or 1.8, because we're all Zambians and we're all proud that this particular country is developing massively. Kudos to everybody that participated. You know, it's not really about 1.1, 1.8 and, and 2.8. But what I'm trying to say is statistics, numbers, data, those are very important. So basically getting back to CR1, right? The undecided voter. If you look at the 2.8, probably uh, a large number of the 2.8, about uh, 60, 40 to about 60% of these voters came through after 2018, after 2019, you know, and uh, a lot of major players, and I, I'm, I'm not here to like, you know, put CR1 on a pedestal because a lot of you are going to be saying, you know, uh, do as I say and all that stuff. But hey, it is what it is. I'm a numbers guy. I'm a statistics guy. I'm a data type of guy. Don't use emotions. I tell it like it is, whether you like it or not, you know, and then there've been a lot of different players. 
there've been uh, Dr. Elias Munsha, TV Vakwetu, there's been Pilato, Laura Miti, Alice Musukwa, Tamara Ngozi. Tamara Ngozi even went to the extent of twerking just to get these, uh, you know, unconverted followers or rather the undecided followers. That's how deep the game was. People resorted to twerking. <laughs> But it is what it is. The message was definitely given by the end of the day. So getting back to the three types of audiences that you need in order for you to propel your manifesto. By the way, what's the role of a political party? Basically, a political party, these guys are business people. And what are they doing? They are selling their manifesto and their message, basically, and their agenda. They're basically, everybody is a salesperson. Everybody is a salesperson to some extent. Even a baby is a salesperson. But Mona, what are you talking about? Mona, now open. No, everybody is a salesperson. Everybody is a marketer. Let me break it down for you. A baby. When a baby is hungry, what does it do? It starts trying to convince you that it's hungry and you need to feed it. It starts, you know, marketing itself by crying. You know, making a lot of noise, being fidgety. Everybody is a salesperson. What do you do? You sell yourself and your manifesto. You tell her, ah, Ineso, me, I'm a very serious guy. I'll be able to do. You sell your manifesto. Everybody is a salesperson. Everybody is a marketer. When you go for a job interview, what do you do? You sell your experience, your CV, you market yourself in a very good type of branding. You go with very good clothes and all that stuff. Everybody is a salesperson. Political parties are basically salespeople trying to sell their message and their manifesto. So what? getting back to CR1, what did he do? He helped accelerate their message and he helped convert a lot of undecided voters. And he also tapped into the PF staunch supporters. That's how very fundamental and very crucial the game was. You understand? So remember what I told you. There's two, three types of audiences that a political party basically needs to convert. The stouch uh, supporters, the, uncom the undecided, and the voters of the opponents, the other guys. You know, so what a lot of people like, for example, Pila Pilato, Dr. Elias Munsha, and all these other people, right? They really helped uh, convert the undecided voters to fall on the side of the UPND. And they also managed to step into the 1.8. And if you just look at the statistics, 1.8, 2.8, what does that mean? It means the supporters of the patriotic front no longer decided, well, they didn't vote for them. So there was an actual vari variamo. You understand? So this is one of the reasons why these people played a very key role. And I'm, you know, not here to, I'm, I'm, I'm lumping everybody in one particular box. Everybody. Dr. Elias Munsha, he did a very recommendable job with regards to Bill 10. If you talk about Bill 10, besides the MPs who were actually, you know, passing the bills and all that stuff, when it comes to like mass psychology, and today's theme is obviously going to be mass psychology and the power of media, you know? So when it comes to Bill 10, Dr. Elias Musha and T. B. Kwetu, uh, General Norman uh, Chipakupako, Mr. Norman Chipakupako, they did a very great job to sort of uh, devour that propaganda that the patriotic front were trying to you know put up so they did a very recommend uh, recommendable job so besides the mps actually voting and doing their thing in the parliament right mass psychology is very important mass psychology is very important so all these people who played a key crucial fundamental role in these elections i put them like in the same box you know everybody cr1 pilato laura muti everybody everybody all the people who went to to the mountain everybody that played a fundamental role especially using media i lumped them in one particular box so anyway i really hope that you guys understand the genesis of today's conversation because we are going to be talking about the mass psychology of politics in zambia and we're going to go back to the unip era type of days and in today's topic we want to tackle Adamson Mushala and 
Alice Lenshina. So everybody who wants to join today's topic, I want to hear from you because I have a very good storyline for you. So I really hope that you got the genesis of what we're going to be talking about. And please do not really get it, get it misconstrued. If you didn't really comprehend or understand, play it back, play it back, play it back. You know, like grab yourself like uh, uh, notes and write, write everything that I talked about because don't 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 be emotional statistics uh, you know uh data uh tracking pixels algorithms machine learning artificial intelligence very important so anyway brother Simkonda, how are you doing i'm fine how are you i'm very good so tell me about lenshina what do you know about alice lenshina ah sorry brother uh, moon i am blank on that one when were you born? 1991. You were born in 1991. You never heard of the Alice Lenshina stories. Right, okay, let me pass it over to brother. Okay, hold on. Hold on, uh, brother Simcon. Uh, brother James, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. How are you, brother, man? I'm, I'm very good. So what do you know about Adamson Mushala or Alice Lenshina? Yeah, <laughs> not so much, but I heard there is a woman. I don't know if, if she was um, in, in a religion, something like a leader who used to drink like urine. Like, <laughs> that's what I just said about that. She, she was a very urine, strong right? woman. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me add another one here. Uh, Brother Moses, uh, turn the video on. And uh, welcome and to the show, welcome. Brother Moses. Hello, good evening, Mr. Moon. Good evening, Brother Moses. You always have feedback. Like, whenever I'm talking to you, there's always that look back. Can you minimize, if, if you're using loudspeakers, turn the loudspeakers off, just have your phone. If you're watching us on another device, another please. Device, please. Okay. Hello. Okay. Yeah, because I'm having yeah. feedback. So what do you know about so Alice Lenshina? about Alice Lenshina? On that one, I I know nothing. All right, Jesus, when were you guys Jesus. born? <laughs> All right, okay. Let me hold on. Let me bring somebody. Let me have some senior citizens. Oh, I can talk a little bit. Yeah, what do you know about Adam yeah, Adamson Mushara? Adam yeah, Adam Adamson Mushara uh, was a Zambian, and. Uh, from here, Northwestern in Kasempa. All right, okay. Ah, brother Jason, welcome to the show. Uh, brother, yeah, I hope that you make it up at the So, brother Jason, I'm sure I'm um, even Aluapula. You've heard about Alice Lenshina, and you've probably heard about uh, Adamson Mushala. What do you know about Adamson Mushala and Lenshina? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, having come from that part of uh, Zambia, northern part of Zambia, actually, before I learned formally about these guys, I was just hearing stories that there, there were these two actually influential individuals that we had in Zambia. Uh, one of them was a woman and the other one was a man. Uh, so when I look at uh, these two, two personalities, Brother Muna, actually... I've learned a lot about um, about how influential actually uh, this capitalism actually can do to the country and how detrimental it can be at the, at the same time. And again, if you look at uh, the religious leaders, how again it becomes dangerous for a religious sect to get involved uh, in uh, issues of politics. Yes, yes. So uh, now, brother Jason, <clears throat> you're moving yes. at a very fast pace. But first of all, uh, tell me, uh, you, you heard these stories. Did you personally experience these stories, or you heard them from somewhere else? Because I believe yeah. you were, you yes, were, you we were, were not we were, either not born or very young. Yeah, when we were young, I remember those days. I was in grade seven. There were some rumors to say there was this Alice Lenshina. Actually, she was uh, like um, a witch doctor. That's where, that's what they were saying. She was feeding people urine, feces, and she could make some people try to fly. 
But after I learned about, uh, actually, I, there is a course at Northrise University, which is called, um, which is called uh, Biblical Outview, where you learn about um, these uh, religions of the world. And uh, when we learned about uh, African traditional religion, that's where we also tackled uh, Alish Lenshina. Yes. So, so accord yeah, according to the formal information, actually, she was a very good woman. She was a prophetess. And actually, she was uh, aiming to fight, uh, actually, polygamy. polygamy, polygamy, polygamy uh, she was uh, she was against uh, witchcraft. She was also against um, giving uh, giving inferior position to women. I think that's what I learned uh, in school about yes. Irish but, but yeah, I, I agree. But the widespread story and the. Uh, mm -hmm. misconception that a lot of Zambians have about Alice Lenshina and, uh, you know, other characters like Adamson Mushala that, uh, le le well, let's just stick to Alice Lenshina saying, you know, she was a cultist. She used to make people drink urine. She used to make people fly and all these despicable things. So she has been sort of uh, deemed to be a very evil character in Zambia's political history. Am I right? Is that the general conception? Yes, that was the general misconception actually on the ground. But uh, there is a formal, there is a formal actually work that Irish and China was uh, up to. Yes. But brother Jesse, yeah, why but, do you think uh, that is? Why? How did that come up? How did that miss? conception and uh the 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 branding of alice lenshina and other people like adamson mushala very evil that, how did that happen yeah according to your preamble you know i followed you that uh, pro, uh propaganda and politics you know um there was a propaganda it was pre created actually and unip actually they managed to use the media just to demean alice lenshina's agenda because they thought that uh, maybe this woman was uh, going to be was going to be a threat to their political move. Because actually, what happened? Uh, there was a clash between um, the Irish and China's follower and the UNIP in those areas. I don't know. Maybe I can uh, I can give you something. I can give you something which I found actually concerning Irish and China. So I don't know mm -hmm. if you can allow me to go through that. Yes, go through. Oh, go through. Me, let me come after five minutes. Can I come back after five minutes? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Just make it snappy. So uh, I can see people like uh, Mary Chimwala saying uh, if she is allowed to join, she would have told us about the actual experience with Alice Lane. She now come through. Mary, come through. Today I really want to talk to senior citizens, people who know this topic, because if you're going to come here and you don't know, what you're talking about, Fiala Monica. Today, I want to talk to senior citizens because I have, I have the whole catalog for you. I have the whole breakdown. I have got the intel, the source, the juice, and all that stuff. So today, senior citizens, you're welcome. Come through. Z Corner wants to talk to you because there's a lot of misconceptions. Uh, anyway, Brother James, uh, yes. So let's talk about propaganda and... Uh, but, but you say you don't know anything about Alice Lenshina and under, under Adamson Mushala, right? Oh, by the way, Mary, Mary, if you want to join, the link is in the is in the comment section. So the link is in the comment section. All the senior citizens who heard anything about Alice Lenshina or Adamson Mushala, use the link in the description. It's in the comment section. If, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, it's in the comment section. Click on that link, join us, turn on your video, make sure you're audible, make sure you're properly dressed, and let's have this conversation. I want all the smoke because we need to rectify this situation. Because Zambia has painted them in a dark way, which, in fact, you know, there weren't uh, any of those things that a lot of you guys, uh, you know, think about them anyway so uh remember if you're watching us kindly share share i can see a lot of people are watching us but you haven't shared we need to have many numbers share this video right now i can only see 33 shares we need to have at least 100 shares so if you're watching me and you can hear me and you're seeing me look at you it only takes one second reshare this stream on your timeline and in five different facebook pages do it right now do it right now share this video right now okay so anyway brother james uh 
let's talk about something that you can relate to because you say you don't know anything about Alice Lynch, you know, which is very bad. You should you should know your history. You should know <laughs> your history because if yes, we do not know our history, we are not we're not going to learn anything. I love history. I love analyzing stuff. So uh, anyway. Yeah, before we come back to yeah. modern days, uh, let's talk to Wakabushi. Wakabushi graduate, have you heard about Alice Lanshina? Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> you, 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 Wakabushi, how old are you? Me. Ah, don't bap and pa me, dear, papa, and can bat in Shamu for a point. Let's leave me a more gumgum and pick up a picture. I quite watch him be that you moan up, but in Shamu, but say that. Ga, Nga Mushal, how about Adamson Mushal? Mushal and I move for a point. So, what have you heard about Adamson Mushal? Ah, story, yeah, there are three. You are in the show. All right, okay. Uh, Mary Chimwala, good, good evening. So you're the one who wrote us this uh, profound uh, proclamation. You said, uh, never said cool and ink the whole deal. It's you, well, Mary. Sure, it's me. All right. Okay. Uh, I, 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 James, let, let me just kick you out this one. Uh, James, uh, sorry, I'll get back to you, Mary. James, let me just kick you out because today I want to talk to senior citizens because you, 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 the, the young ones, uh, you don't really have the juice. I'm sorry, guys. Today I want to talk to the senior citizens because it's this is profound stuff. So anyway, sis, Sister Mary, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. So give us the juice. What do you know about Alice Lenshina? And by the way, you proclaimed that you had first-hand experience with Alice Lenshina. Woo! This is what we need to know. <laughs> okay. I'll start from when I was very young in Lundazi. I, was, I went to visit my grandmother. And there they used to... She, Lenshina had a church. So my grandmother belonged to that church and they used to worship uh, in that church. Then when I was in primary school, uh, one, one day we just saw, first, first my dad was a teacher. So one of the days he came to the Boma, to Lunda's Boma to visit. But then he could not go back home because there was that fighting between the Shina people and the soldiers. So he, he told us that he was, um, they went to hide in the Lundaz River. So then they came back home. But we were at school, at a boarding school. So that week, uh, we just had, um, this was at Kanyanga Girls uh, Boarding School in Lundazi. So we were at school and then uh, we just uh, uh, saw some people that were hacked with an axe come to the, uh, to the health center. But the sisters did not tell us what was going on. In the afternoon, they took us all to the convent. This was a, a mission school. They took us into a convent and we, we hid in there. We started praying. And um, that night we slept in the convent. The next day, they said there was no school. And then they told us to go in the bush to hide. We didn't know what we were hiding from, but we went into the bush. And then uh, later on, we just saw um, a troop of soldiers with their trucks come to the school and they surrounded the school. But they were not doing harm to us. They told us to come out of the bush and come to the school. So we all came to the school and they picked us from that school to take us to the Lundazi Boma. And these Lenshina people were ruthless. They burnt villages, they killed people ruthlessly. And they used to tell their people to say, don't be afraid, 
you won't die if the soldiers come to you just drink urine and smear feces on yourselves and they did that this is real but still more they were you know overpowered by the government because so, uh, mary sorry for cutting you off so you saw them uh, you saw them burning you saw the Lenshina people burning the the churches themselves they you saw not it with that your eyes they burnt, we were at school, but that's what, what happened in the villages, surrounding villages where we were. They no, burnt, but did you, did you actually see it with your eyes? Did you no, see I, did not, I did not see, but we heard, because we had relatives you in heard. villages who, yes, who had been killed. They Ladies were and killed. gentlemen, remember what I told you about media and propaganda, right? So anyway, uh, le let me play the video. This video is actually mm -hmm. from way back in the day. This is the the the, the st same story that you that you're telling us about Alice Lenshina and the soldiers. This is the actual footage. Mm -hmm. This is from mm -hmm. the Zambian archives. Yes. And guess who's guess who's burning? Who's who's that burning the the villages? Is that a soldier or Alice Lenshina people? That looks like a soldier. The, the, the but these burning... people were people. They used to hack them with axes. With I saw a, a person who hacked. Uh, you saw a person hacked from the hacked, clinic. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but based on this factual data that you're seeing, this is like real footage from the Lenshina days. The people who burnt the houses were not Lenshina. These were soldiers. Look at the chicken and all that stuff. These were soldiers burning so you see the importance of propaganda and media <laughs> so the whole story was turned and shifted you know and everybody has got the misconception saying ah it was lenshina who did this it was the lumpa people who were doing this this is actual footage from way back in the day propaganda ladies and gentlemen the media and if you look at unip uh we're having trouble with uh mary but anyway she's going to get back so mary please rejoin the the stream so if you look at the importance of media and how profound it is it's a very powerful thing now imagine what would have happened to pilato if there wasn't any social media imagine what would have happened to Alice Musukwa in 2021, if there was no media freedom, if she wasn't able to, uh, you know, give us the actual data and people can have uh, the priority or rather the privilege of deciphering what is wrong and what is right. Do you know what type of propaganda the PF would have made if there wasn't any media freedom or social media or if we had one broadcasting corporation like ZNBC. Imagine if there was only ZNBC to be able to disseminate information. Do you know the amount of propaganda and misconception which could have been put uh, and, and uh, you know put up uh, out there? More than day like Laura Mitty, Alice Musukwa, Tamara Ngozi, they would if if we didn't have any media freedom or any broadcasting rights there would have been the Alice Lenshinas of today Alice Lenshina Adamson uh, Adamson Mushala they were just very good opposition political parties they were the defiant ones people like Pilato I consider Pilato uh, a modern day Adamson Mushala People like Alice Musukwa, Laura Mitty, and all these people who were very firm on the ground, these are the modern-day Alice Lenshinas, people who are able to say, no, we're not going to take it anymore. Let's do something about that. Let's mobilize ourselves. How did these people do it in 2021? They did it digitally. They mobilized themselves digitally. They've got, uh, you know, followers, crusaders. But back in the day, the only uh, way Alice Lenshina could do it was having actual congregations. And back in the day, right, Alice Lenshina and other people like Adamson Mushale, they were so very profound with organizing themselves. They were a threat. They were a, th uh, a threat to the UNIP and, uh, you know, about KK and all that stuff. What did they do? Media, propaganda, paint them with a different brushstroke.
Let the people not know exactly what's going on because they were a threat. They had like a big enough voice. They were converting people. So if you look at current people like, you know, Laura, uh, Laura Mitty, uh, Alice Musoko and all these other people. These are your modern day Alice Lenshinas. But due to the fact that now people have got the privileges of having access to information, everybody can come on social media, give their side of the story, and people can be able to decipher and judge for themselves. That's why it's not really effective to have a massive propaganda on a large scale, like the way that they did it to Alice Lynch. Now, you saw the way Mary was convinced. She was convinced, saying the uh, Avena Alice Lynch were burning uh, villages and they burnt everything. She, that's what she thought. But in the footage, the, the actual data, that's why I told you, ladies and gentlemen, I deal with data, numbers, statistics, algorithms, tracking pixels, artificial intelligence, machine learning. I don't really care about emotions. I don't really care about hearsay. I look at the numbers, the actual facts, the data. So if you look at that footage, who was burning the villages? The soldiers. Who sent the soldiers? That's your homework. The mass psychology of politics. So how, how is 2026 going to be shaped? What's the political arena going to be like in 2026? I'm not really going to go into that. That's like a million dollar type of discussion. And I'm obviously here for consultations if you pay me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, well, Brother Jason, welcome to the show. Are you good? Uh, uh, while we're waiting for Sister Mary, uh, Sister Mary, we need uh, to have you here again because you said you've got the actual data. And, uh, you know, so I really want to talk to senior citizens. So... Uh, Brother Jason is still not here, okay? So let's bring in Chituta. Chituta. Okay, we, we don't have him. Let's bring in Bamwansa. Bamwansa. Laka? Laka, Laka. Muy bueno. Laka, how are you feeling? Actually, I've been itching to contribute on the issue of Wile in China. Yes, Alice. by the way. Yeah, before you jump in, how old are you? Yeah. I'm 40. Yeah, 40, right? So... You yes. probably heard of stories, right? About the Venal and China and all that stuff. Yes. Uh, so actually, what? I've been having keen interest in learning about the past and the, the history we have. So at least I've been trying to gather information. Right, right, right. So what propaganda did you hear? So tell us your story. All right, okay. Uh, so are you there? What I, yes, I'm here. So, okay, according to what I heard, uh, Alice is the one that started the Lunte Church. So, you know, at that point in time, it was at a period when uh, there was this thing of governance fighting against the, the whites, and there were all sorts of uh, organizations, such as uh, the Organization for... Mm, yeah, your internet is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's Sungu Chaya. <laughs> your internet is troubling us, <laughs> brother James. <laughs> brother James. Yes, brother. Well, yes. Welcome back. So what have you learned in today's presentation? Since you didn't know anything about Alice Lynch, now what have you learned about uh, propaganda and, and the media? Yeah, actually, I've learned a lot whereby um, in politics, people, they don't appreciate good people. No matter what you are doing, because what I've come to discover is that majority politicians, they are there to enrich themselves. So if there is a person who are against uh, uh, that issue, then they will make sure that uh, they eliminate that person in whatever ways by doing like the way they used to do about Mushala. They used to chase him about it in China, putting him something which she, she didn't even do. So that's what I've, I've learned actually. Yeah. Yeah, but, but don't you think that's, that's how the game goes? You, you, you expect politicians to be nice. It's winner takes all. Uh, you ex you no, expect 
That's not the way it's supposed to be in the sense that as far as I'm concerned, those guys, they are our leaders. We take them to represent us, not to, to misuse us in any way. No. So it's not a good thing. It's only that uh, it's unfortunately whereby the same people, they try even to use Christianity as if maybe they are, they are, they are, they are straight. They are like, what? That's, what? that's what really pains me most. Because there is no way as a Christian nation, you find that this person, like, for instance, these politicians, how much are they getting as their salaries? They are getting no, a lot James, of money. Brother, brother yes. James, brother James, brother James, brother James. Hey. Brother James. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's okay because I, 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 I'm, I'm really fascinated at how uh, you guys and the general population expect things yes. from politicians, and uh, yes. you, you expect them to be holy, you know, angels. That's the name of the game. They get into the game and they appeal to your needs. By the end of it all, they want to make their lives better. You need to know how to get the most out of politicians. Politicians are not going to look back and say, look, Nalula and Zed Corner did a phenomenal job with regards to propelling our agenda. Let's again to check it out much. They won't do that. They've already won. Why do they need but, me? But you brother, understand? brother man. Brother man, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's the way they have taken it. But if you compare the politics of uh, African and white people, it's totally different. How? How? Mm, now, now, see. now, brother James, sir, on that one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you on that one. I'm not even going to be nice. Tell, but anyway, go on. How, how is it different? Ah, uh, I think he, they might not be okay. 100% as well, those guys, because they are politicians, as you rightly put it. But here in Africa, this is too much, I, I, I think. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I, I think perhaps if you say in Africa, it's it's blatant. Everything is like, uh, it's, it's so open, it's so in your face. Uh, even developed countries do, you know, there's corruption, there's lobbying. And uh, people who fund uh, politicians, uh, you know, they yes. get a lot of uh, kickbacks. They get incentives. It's the name of the game. If you support the Democratic Party or the, or the Republican Party, if you are a top-notch funder, if you, you know, pump in a lot of money, they're going to get incentives. That's just how the cookie crumbles. But the only way, that, yeah. the biggest difference is in developed countries, it's subtle. It's civilized. They don't have blatant. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, it's, it's there as well. It's there. Yeah, it's there. I agree with you. It's there. But the way they do it is different as compared to uh, how politicians in Africa and in particular do it. Because even something which is simple and straightforward, can you take this man straight, uh, to the, those vulnerable people? Then they, they deviate like that. But that's for, for the white uh, politicians, at least they're trying to, to take that thing. Maybe, it's, yeah, yeah, something which is reasonable. At least they are able to consider that uh -uh, I need first to, to give this thing to, to these vulnerable people. Then at least the remaining I can maybe pop the jeans in my pocket. Not, not, not politicians in Africa. Eh? They have no mercy upon oh, yeah, okay. us who are poor. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. You're saying, you know, stealing yes. from the public. Okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, in that, in those senses, yeah, you are correct. But uh, I was talking about incentives. You know, like uh, usually what happens in developed nations is the people who fund politicians are just given, you know, perks, either, you know, tax breaks, uh, uh, incentives uh, to, you know, have like a better business environment. Uh, they do have yes. some sort of uh, corruption, but it's not really that blatant. Uh, a company or rather a country donates 70 million US dollars yeah. to a politician who's done their last them. Yeah, no, it's not really like that. There's at least some maturity and there's some civilization with regards to dealing with public, uh, you know, coffers. But lobbying, lobbyists are always there in all these developed countries. But anyway, uh, Brother James, we'll get back because we're straight from the topics uh, that we have today. So uh, I'll, I'll bring you back, Brother James. Brother Jason, have you compiled your, your notes and your presentation? Yeah. So I was saying, actually, there was a demeanor which uh, was spread, actually, against Alice and China. 
amurenga because um, before actually Alice then she started that age she she was uh, she was uh, one of the catholics actually according to the little information that i have she was a catholic and it happened that uh, at one point she felt sick very sick actually and she was in a coma and um, when she recovered to her conscious she claimed to say she met Christ actually who instructed her to start doing something for the betterment of the people and when she started actually the church at Lumpa at, at Lumpa at Zion actually the Lumpa church at Zion our home village she started preaching against the polygamy, against witchcraft, against actually the extortion which were happening during that period. It was northern Rhodesia. People were forced to pay tax, but uh, the tax which people were, work, were paying, it was not working for them. So now, when uh, Kaunda looked at this issue, it appeared to, to be like a threat to the movement which was happening then because actually it was it started happening in the, around 1964, somewhere June, July, somewhere there. So now when the KK and the other guys, they looked at that to say, oh, no, I think if Ali Shlenshina is going to start doing this, we are going to lose a lot of people actually who are going to support us in order to to get independence. So they started fighting the Irish Tenshina supporters and the like. They started calling uh, them all sorts of names. They were uh, accused of practicing witchcraft. Like you had the mother. People were, uh, the sisters, it was actually the Oloman Catholic. It was actually against Irish Tenshina's movement. So those people who were in uh, Catholic schools, uh, boarding schools, they were fed all this kind of information to say, no, this person is a witch, this person is the like. So actually, according to what I have here, maybe I've kept something, they say that um, actually Ali Shrenshina met Christ who gave her the task of spreading a special message. She became the focus of revival movement at Ruwa Mission, where she was baptized. Lenshina preached Christian doctrine with the baptism as the only observant. She attacked witchcraft, sorcery, condemned the consumption of alcohol, and practice of polygamy. So if you look at Alish Lenshina, actually, she was also at the center of fighting, actually, the gender, the so-called gender, which is more pronounced these days. She started fighting for the rights of the women. Now, those days, women were not, uh, were, were not respected. So the politician looked at Ali Shrenshina as a threat, actually. So they started making up these e issues and the like, and the ex she was uh, trying to expose, actually, what the government was doing. So now when the KK guys looked at that, they said, ah, no, there is no way we can allow this movement to continue because this, guy, this person is going to... Is going to is going to scrape uh, scrape away the customer like you are saying. Politics of Africa actually they are like a business where they would want to maximize profit, eh? By by manipulating people, they don't want people to have that clear information. So whosoever comes with the information actually to enlighten the minds of the the, the general public that individual becomes a threat. They don't want African politicians, actually, most African politicians, we don't know whether HH is going to follow suit. They don't want people to have that, uh, that enlightenment, actually, which is happening inside there. That's no wonder you saw in the previous regime. They were nothing like what we are doing, Brother Muna. Eh? The the media was cracked down. Yes, why do you think that was very media. crucial for them? Why did they start cracking down on media houses? Yeah, because, because Prime they TV, knew what ETC. Was, yeah, because they knew that, uh, that what they were doing was actually against the will of the people. Yeah? And they wanted just continue doing all those fracases which they were doing under underground. So whosoever came out like yourself in the open to start sensitizing. No wonder they were being cracked down. 
to the extent of mm -hmm. elimination mm -hmm. method because they yes, never absolutely. wanted people actually yes, to yes, have yes. the full information of what was happening they wanted to paint a, a, a the different picture this side meanwhile right. there was a blue picture this other side so whosoever comes to say you guys where these people are trying to focus your attention this is not what is happening look at this so when they see that they wouldn't want because they were marketing their part and they exactly. never wanted people to know it's, the truth of what was obtaining on the ground the narrative ladies and gentlemen yes. i hope you've got your pen and paper and all that good stuff controlling the narrative just like we have witnessed with regards to alice lenshina and adamson uh mushala right Back in the day, we didn't have the privilege of uh, media freedom and having access to information like that. The unique people controlled the narrative and they fed the masses false information and everybody, everybody after, you know, that particular period just knows Alice Lenshina was evil. She was a cultist. She used to make people drink. They controlled the narrative. The PF yes. also tried this by controlling media platforms if you've got like a different uh you know story or you've you're not really aligning with their agenda you get kicked you know you get the boot this is why uh tv stations like prime tv were uh you know the sort of uh stopped from doing what they <coughs> have to do because they were not really able to tame the narrative and control the narrative because it's all about media it's all about perception now my question to you gentlemen is look at how many years have passed and how the narrative was shifted with regards to Alice Lenshina and Adamson Mushala. What role does controlling the narrative and the media play with regards to propaganda? Anybody can take that, Brother Jason or also what? Anybody? Yeah, so my question is uh, what role does media and how important is it? Uh, to have uh, an understanding of how propaganda works and how it can be, you know, termed and controlled. How how important is that? Yeah, uh, Brother Muna, I can answer that question by saying that uh, that's why it is important for the general public, actually, in as much as they understand their rights as media platforms, they should also... <clears throat> They should also uh, they should also get to understand their responsibility because you know these media personnel they are coming from the communities where we are coming from they are actually benefiting from the economy which we are benefiting from so that's where it calls for each and every individual who is called actually a citizen of a particular nation to be responsible enough to know how to protect is a, is or a heritage to know how to protect the future of each and every nation because it also it borders on the on the media because you know the media has the influence to the extent that whatever is said on the tv it is gospel truth that's why if you looked at uh, the previous regime they took out they monopolized ZNBC. they wanted to feed the people the wrong information yeah, because media has that power to say, Naba ZNBC Naba Randa. Yeah? you have seen the way we are in Zambia. You know, it is a, it is a country actually, Naba send uh, propaganda to be so real. Yeah? If I just hear miners, even having the, fate, uh, the, the first hand, like you saw how strong the, uh, that auntie came out to say, actually I witnessed until you showed those scripts and she was the, uh, and, uh, so this is what was happening. She was claiming to say, I witnessed it was the, the Lenshina's followers who were actually destroying the villages, who were telling people to drink urine because of the media influence. So we are saying the media personnel, they should understand that they are part of this community. They benefit from the same economy and whatever fracas that before the country, it is both the media personnel and the, the, the general public who shall are going to face the, the, the outcomes of such. So we are saying the media platform has to be, has to be, it, it, it has to be, 
it has to be upright. It has to be standing for the truth. The media platform, actually, they should be the ones, actually, to be of right eye intellectual, to be patriotic. Because if they are going to say, no, we are going to do this and that. That's why you hear people, are, you hear people actually, who are, of, um, who, who are patriotic enough. They went parallel, like Abena Siawan, look at how he helped us. Because every Zambian, every media, every media champion in Zambia, Amako Media and Tuakwata, Abena Mutare Mwanza, they were all clapping, they were cheerleaders for the, mm -hmm. for the patriotic front. Yes. And look and at how influential, how influential yes. Siawan came. And despite him being called all sorts of those evil names, but he had to play that role and to transform the mindset of the people. People are educated. That's why from that, we should not just take it for granted to say, ah, Chisiawan Chikari, look at what he, what he did. It caused actually for someone to be patriotic. You know, Siawan was claiming to say, I'm not happy with the way you Zambians are suffering. That's why I'm coming. I'm not interested in so and so and the like. He was actually he was actually dead with a lot of with a with a huge sums of money, but he stood for the truth, eh? for the benefit of actually those same individuals. Now, and brother Jason, yes, you you touched a very good point because I want to add that yo Munedu Mbasara Siawan. So now let's talk about the importance of uh, controlling the narrative and that, to the extent uh, that PF went. Let's talk about how they decided to buy the whole music industry. Look at how much money they allegedly, reportedly invested in the influence of your top musicians. Look at how much they bought the whole entire industry. All your favorite musicians were twerking for the patriotic front. Why did they do that? Why did they spend top dollar on uh, your favorite musicians to twerk for them? I think um, uh, the reason is so simple, Brother Muna. The reason is so simple. There is no integrity. When we look at somebody who can be bought cheaply, it means that somebody has no integrity. If somebody can be bought to support a wrong, it means there is a moral decay in that individual. Because, Brother Moon, I can give this example. Eh? Maybe an incentive to say, I want you to kill all your brothers and your mother. Let me give an example. I'm sure this is so common. This is so common. I'll give an example. Me as a businessman. Are you getting that, brother Munarula? Loud and eh? clear, sir. Loud yes. Clear. I, want to, I want to drive that Land Rover with somebody who started a, a business uh, 27 years ago. I want to build that mansion within a year where I've started the business. Then somebody comes to say, ah, boy, Urechula, there is this and that. But, you know, if there is no integrity in me, I'll go for that. If there is a moral decay in me, I'll agree. But one question I should ask myself to say, who is going to benefit actually? Eh? If I have all these things, who are the beneficiaries? Eh? Who are the beneficiaries after me? If the answer is, there, there won't be any beneficiary. And my, my children, children, they are going to suffer this consequence. That's where I should say, ah, no, I don't have to go for that. I should do stand for the truth. I should stand for the love of my 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 my, my country. I should do stand actually to protect. But look at those uh, guys like you. You touch the the the, the, the musicians. I'm a guys. They have got influence masters, eh? yes. That's why I. That's why. I remember, I remember Manro Munwe preaching one time to say, imagine the masses that follow, that follow Michael Jackson. If Michael Jackson could be converted today and he says, I'm a pastor, imagine how, how many people can give their lives to Christ. You can imagine that. 
So our musician, they forgot to say, actually, they are the ones who can stand and preach the truth for the people. Look at the songs that Bapiket Shala sang. Eh? They were educative. They were actually singing. Eh? Singing against the government. But you know, they are thinking to say, They are able to educate people. Eh? But I'm a musician, yes, they took things for granted. So to say. But if you have a he brought us in a in a sea one and one with that in Doshi. In an Ali Monaquati, he was he was an angel actually who helped Zambians to to work out of their slum and be able to see. Eh? I'm a musician's best work, actually, Bari, to him in a brother, Muna, who to him in a former Zambian. Then I bade your bread. But the masses, but but somebody who is an outsider stood for us as Zambians. So that's why we are saying, as media personnel, there must be that integrity to the extent that no matter the incentive, they should say no. We cannot broadcast this because if we broadcast, this is the influence it is going to have on the ground. Eh? This is the influence it's going to have in the on the ground. This is the injury it is going to cause on the ground. This is what happens. It, it, it is because of the media that started actually genocide in Rwanda. Eh? Look at that. So the media, the media psychology, it has got influence to the extent that Necharo Kukosha because Devin, of the and, and brother Jason. Sorry for cutting you off. You're using the, the term influence. Now, this is a very profound uh, term, and I really want Zambians to really decipher and understand what we're talking about. So, Brother Jason, I'm going to get back to you. Uh, Brother Oswald, welcome to the show. I know you are an economist, right? So you obviously deal with markets, uh, you know, all these uh, financial jargons and all that stuff. So, do you believe that uh, influence is a currency nowadays? You can unmute yourself. Yeah, for sure. It's a very powerful currency. And I, I know they may not be pure economics, but still, even in economics, there are some issues that we will end as far as politics are concerned. Or maybe out of maybe my academic background, I think we... I, I may be a little bit vested with one or two political issues. And mm -hmm. I'm sure the influence, especially from the media, comes from what most is feared to as agenda, agenda setting theory. And uh, I feel this is what the PF was trying to use. Um, I, I believe maybe even at the time of Kaunda, that's what they're trying to use at the Lenshina issue. But this, this is something that you can't, you know, this is beyond academics, purely just wisdom, maybe purely things that you can learn. Yeah. I, I don't know where I should start from and where I should end, but it's definitely media yes. as a very so, big uh, okay, 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 can, can you help us understand uh, uh, tangible goods versus intangible goods in relation to influence? Because you've got tangible things and intangible things, things that you can't, Touch, but, but but anyway, just because uh, I've got a point with regards to influence and how influence is a currency which is intangible. You 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 can't, you know, put influence in a box and close it. You know, you 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 can't really uh, sort of uh, uh, demarcate its boundary. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? So it's an intangible currency that is very profound. But anyway, go on. We'll have a conversation after what after that. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. This is in in as much as it can be intangible. You know, the influence of the media cannot be ignored. You know, this is one. I I don't know. I haven't seen what the PF has said. Uh, in their report. Uh, in there, I don't know if they were doing audit or no, uh, whatever yeah, they are well, calling it. Yeah, but we're not talking about PF specific. We're just talking like in, in general and the influence of uh, characters. You know, like people nowadays, uh, Facebook celebrities are called influencers. Why are they called influencers? 
you understand why is CR1 an influencer? Is yeah. Okay, CR1, you know, uh CR1 okay, he claimed to be No, I'm, I'm talking person. about uh no no, I'm I'm talking about the, influence. Uh, influence in general like I, I want us to specifically talk about uh influence as a currency. Okay. Okay, yes. I, I'm good at giving examples. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm good at giving examples, but I don't know if I've got that liberty to give um, specific examples. I, I don't know. I know no, maybe go some for examples. It. This is go for it. Yeah. Go for it. This is Z corner. Everything is uh, allowed, except in Z. Yeah. Okay. okay. For sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, you know, influence. Um, uh, I don't know which side should I talk about from media perspective or from uh political perspective which area should i go or you allow me to go whichever direction just go, uh, tell it like it is okay I influence uh you know social media is trend that most of us has adopted maybe the youths who are maybe the 80s 90s maybe people were influenced differently maybe prior to us being on the scene, I'm sure some other things were influencing them. But what I must say is influence definitely is something that you can't ignore either in a political sphere or either in our working aspect or whatever, even in marketing aspect. I've got my sales background to some extent. You know, influence is something that you can't ignore. This is something that you can't overlook. And influence, in fact, is something that we have to live by because it helps us in one way or another or it works against us in one way or another. That's why I was trying to give an example, which may be political. I think influence of the social media, maybe that's what a lesson that PF needs to learn. Maybe that's why well. Uh, CR1 may have his own influences, but his own followers is not somebody that you can ignore. I may not be a believer in him, frankly speaking, but it's not something that you can ignore. Neither am I. I'm, I'm not a believer yeah. in him. I just, I understand the influence he has on the political scenario. I don't believe his practices and all, I, but I understand he's, uh, he's got influence on the Zambian political arena. It's important to differentiate his personal side hustle, what he does on the back. But me, <laughs> my only interest is the influence he has on the political arena. The Zambian political arena, everything else that he does, that his own, uh, that 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 that's his own baby to lay to sleep. You understand? And people can decipher whatever they want from him and other stuff. But he is influential on the Zambian political scene. It's a fact. Statistics have backed that. But anyway, go on. Yes, for sure. That that that, that gentleman is very influential. Is got you know most of the times when he's live, when you look at the people that were um, listening to his live broadcast. It's not something that you can ignore as far as politics are concerned. And I wouldn't say uh, uh, UPND managed to win without his influence. For sure, it played a very critical role that you should, um, we should not ignore. In fact, for me, I was using a theory called, the one I referred to, agenda setting uh, theory. This is a theory whereby you look for what is affecting people, then you create something to talk about and then people, you know, it, it start attracting people's comment and so forth. You know, this is a very powerful psychological tool that you can't ignore. And this is a very powerful um, lesson maybe for us youths and so forth that would want to learn one or two things from him. So those are the things that we can't ignore. So influence is key in everything that we are doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so, uh, gentlemen, do you want to add on the fact that uh, influence is a new currency that can be that is intangible? You you can't you 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 can't put influence in a box. You can't. It meanders. It meanders, and it has a way of you know just making you lose grip of it. You understand? But it's a very profound. Uh, currency that the Zambian political arena at this particular moment, right? There's a few people who are 
harnessing it. And uh, you see, uh, the way we do politics in Zambia, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, 50, 60 years uh with re, with regards to maturity like if you look at the way the the pf uh, are currently doing politics they are, they are practicing politics of uh uh 1970 1980 L let's talk about uh using religion as a hook today we saw the post that uh, Bom and Lusambo posted with regards to the church saying, ah, I can't believe the church are not vocal about this. Those are politics that could have worked in 1970. That's not going to work in 2021, 2022. Everybody can see past that stuff. You know, the politics that the PF were using, those were like, um, I don't know, Guerrilla tactics, I don't know, just something primitive, primitive politics, politics of the 1970, 1980s. But nowadays, the the arena has been, it, it has been disrupted. The tactics that a political party can use in 2021, 2022 and beyond are very different from those that were being used in the UNIP era. And unfortunately, at this particular moment, I'm not really seeing a lot of uh, political parties harnessing the power of uh, evolved politics, smart politics, politics which are subtle but effective. I'm just seeing old, old strategies, old, old tactics, you know. So uh, I think these are the consultations that political parties need to have, how to have an effective message, how to play politics the smart way, an effective way. And of course, I do see some people from the UP, and I'm not really going to mention any names. Some few people are utilizing these uh, advanced ways of doing politics. There are, I'm seeing a few people, a few key players, I'm sure probably a lot of you already know who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to give you specific details because that would be, you know, letting the cat out of, uh, out of the bag. So basically what I'm trying to say is uh, politicians from now on, from 2021 onwards, you have to step up your game. Stop practicing guerrilla politics and politics and things that can work that could have worked in 1970, using religion as your as your leeway, your hook. That's that's so mediocre. Stop using religion and using the 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 the, the politics of uh, you know 1970. It's not going to work. Zambians are smart. They are advanced. You need to change your strategies. You know and. I really want the political uh, arena in Zambia to be very healthy, you know, because let's say, for example, as much as I sympathize with the UPND, right, if there's a monopoly, we're going to get back to being a one party state, which we do not want. We need to have active and, uh, you know, proper opposition. You understand? Because uh, power kind of manipulates people. It kind of gets to people's heads. So as much as we love the UPND and we're happy that they're in power and we really love President Haka in the Hichilema, he needs good opposition to keep him in check and make sure that we collectively win as a nation. That's why we need strong opposition. That's why we need opposition political parties that play the game smart. Don't bring in politics of 1970, guerrilla tactics and all that, you know, crap from the, from the past. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Sober up. You know, anyway, but I digress. So, okay, uh, um, yes, brother, I, I just yes. wanted to support your, your there. What happened on 12 August is not a lesson for PF only. In fact, PF has little to learn there. The people that have got a lot of lessons to learn from what happened on 12 August are you being other people who inspire to be in politics in future. One thing that maybe we should not ignore for those who is to be in politics is the influence of the media. One. Two, I, I, I have a dream Indian politics can reach at a stage, especially among the youths. You know, uh, sorry to refer to PF. I know they may take one or two, but there are things that they did well. But let me talk about this openly, which I would want to share with my my fellows, though I'm, I'm, I'm a graduating youth now, I'm no longer a youth starting from this year. So for, for my fellow youths or my friend youths, things that we need to learn is not to use violence. But above all, we should practice smart politics there. If there is an issue that is affecting people, 
I'll give a practical example. Let's say we are talking about IMF issue. I thought it on the is a hot issue in the media vis-a-vis -vis the subsidies. So suppose we bring that issue, somebody from different politics, uh, political parties or political interests and so forth. We sit down, then let's discuss what are the advantage of doing this, doing our with subsidies, what are the advantages? Those prone and uh, people are prones and people are who are giving cons. I think you discuss so that you come up with one thing. But what was happening in PF is where people you start fighting. And some of us may not be good at fighting. Then we take a, 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 a back seat. We need to learn. We need to have to practice smart politics whereby if there is an issue that is affecting the nation, when you bring it on the forum, we sit down and discuss. Those who are supporting, they give their reason of supporting. Those who are against, they give their reasons of why are they against. And if there are solution, what are the solution the way out? If we don't get this, what will happen? You know, such kind of discussion and such kind of forum, I'm sure it will make us more wise, it will make us to be more, we will seem like we've got wisdom. You get the point? Later than we start fighting and so forth, because the youths are the ones who are used. Unfortunately, even some people in the higher institution wounds and so forth are used in this uh, in the similar way when in actual sense those are the fountain of knowledge that we should look forward to where people come and give their view oh subsidies are bad because of blah 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 or these are bad because of blah blah i'm not talking about only the subsidies any topic that can come or any issue that can be trending on the social media you discussed in such a way those are the smart politics that i dream to come forth. Then the other thing is, um, listen to the people as leaders is very key. You know, you, you can't be a leader. You can have the good strategy. Uh, my grandfather used to tell me about one thing to say, a bad carpenter always blames his tools, even when he's got the best tools. Have the best tools in your hand, but as long as you are not an expert, as long as you can't do the job, you terribly fail that particular job. But even if you've got uh, tools are not adequate and you're an expert, at least you try your best, even with bad tools. That's one thing I learned from my grandfather. And these are the things that I'll say. PF had good strategy campaign, but the way they were applied, lack of seriousness and everything, costed them elections. But lessons are not only for PF, are also for UPND. The same thing can happen to UPND if they take the same trend. And this is one thing I wanted to tell the European Deep. There is that trend of calling people to defect from one party to another. No, this one has defected. Is a very big fish. Is joining the party. If you observe the last five years, we had people defecting, thousand and thousand. But those didn't translate in votes. That's a very poor and very bad strategy, which I have seen that European Deep also want to emulate. No, this one has jumped the camp. Is now this part, no, this one, that should come to an end. What is needed is people just to talk about little numbers. And we need also um, academic or political experts who've done political science and give a proper analysis of what's happening. Oh, this part will lose this if they do this. Not the way we are doing application of whatever. Anyway, I can say so much. Let me give room to other people. Right, right. So, uh, Brother Monsa, then we'll pass it over to Brother Simkon. Brother Monsa, what's your take? And stay on topic, please. Yes. Uh, the issue is, is still on the influence. I would want to comment. So, um, before I go ahead, I would want to talk about the uh, first thing about the brain itself. The brain is designed in uh, three types. There's the controlling controlled and the stubborn. So uh, many people and numbers are being controlled, are in the system of being controlled. So that's the reason why a lot of people need somebody to look up to. That's where influence comes in. That's the reason why all sorts of people or the politicians take the opportunity to take the influencers 
to the podium so that other people might follow, even when they don't know what they are following. So that uh, when it comes to the uh, politicians of yesterday had taken advantage of uh, blackwashing uh, people, not giving them the true identity of what they want to do for the people, which is now a bygone thing and it cannot work for the people because people are, 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 work, are worked up now. They want real issues to be put on the table. And if you are a politician and you don't have a good uh, motive, you have a, a personal motive, you've got nothing to discuss or to tell the people what you want to do for, for the people. And in the end, what does that bring? You bring all sorts of uh, issues that doesn't build people at all, or that doesn't give the people what they need. In the end, uh, we have what we had like yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, if we are like, I second with you, Mr. Mr. Mwansamari, the one who was, who was just talking uh, about what he was talking about. It is high time that the politicians bring issues to the table, which are new issues, which affects our countries, and which, which way forward we should go if we are to understand our direction. Besides, many people are now, many people, the less learned, much learned, are now understanding what is the way forward with governance. So, um, these politics have taken another stage now. They've taken another stage whereby all those politics of propaganda, implicating people and doing all sorts of things are now not working. What is working is what you tell the people is what should be on the table. And that's how you are going to win it. And this thing has to continue now. And if it has to continue, it is through the same media to educate people understanding that this is how politics should be done. Otherwise, if we don't take this opportunity to educate people, to say in, the, in politics, this is what we are supposed to be doing, they will not know. All, all they will know is that we have to wait for a musician to come and dance. The best, the best musician, the one he sings for, is the one we vote for. Why? It's because things that are true are not brought to the table to communicate it to people, media, and through influence in a correct way. So that is my point on, the, on that. So I would rather take to leave my, uh, the opportunity to, to, to my All right, okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Brother Mwansa, and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Take care. So, Brother Simkonda, you're up next. Now, uh, staying on topic, influence. Give us a take. Unmute yourself. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Brother Mona, and uh, the viewers also, good evening. Yeah, nice topic. Yeah, to start with, I can say that um, everything when it comes, it comes with advantage and disadvantages. So now it's up to the users to utilize what comes. So when uh, social media came, there's advantages to social media and also there's there also there's advantage and disadvantage. So now in terms of influence, social media has a lot of influence, especially to the, it's, it's worldwide. So what I can say is that uh, what was happening like in the previous regime, so like the current president, the HH and others, they utilize social media. I think this is where PF uh, uh, made a mistake. They underrated social media. But what they forgot was that uh, we moved from analog to digital. digital. So uh, again, when we talk of uh, like uh, CR1. CR1 also utilized 
the same social media to influence the masses. What was happening during the previous regime and the reality of life it gave advantages to this, like uh, the the UPND. The time they were on the, um, they were on the oppositions in opposition. So social media has advantages and disadvantages. So what I can say to the political parties, I think we have to move on. We have to move with technology now. The politics which used to happen during uh, Kaunda, during Chiluba, during Mwanawasa, during Sata, Arabi, uh, and uh, the President Edgar Rungu is different. You have moved now. A lot of people now, they are on social media. A lot of people now, they are om almost they are educated. At least people, they have a basic knowledge and we are able to analyze issues. And this time also I'm following where like the opposition, the way they are giving the check and checks and balances. And also they have to be very, very careful because as citizens, we are educated now. We are able to understand and analyze issues. So now if they try maybe to bring kind of politics of maybe name calling, those type of politics are long gone now. It won't work. We want new issues. So, and also for them, for those who are in opposition, they can utilize this same social media to give check and balance and also to sell their manifestos to us. Because what I want to see, I me mean, as a citizen, we want to see these types, these politicians, maybe like they have to come here on the Z corner. This is the time now, they have to start coming on Z corner here. We ask them question, they explain their, their manifestos. It's up to us citizens now to choose which one are we going to vote for? Not this kind of political calling, those are long gone. Like you, what used to happen? No, Anagudi Sama Mainzi, no, is tribal, whatever. Those things, it won't work. What we want is uh, we want people who can analyze issues. So let them, you try this same social media, let them come on social media, analyze issues. Like now, for now, we have the issues of uh, IMF. They have to come on board. Let them come, call someone from. This political party, another political party, let them come and debate issues, not attacking each other. No. Those kind of politics won't work. Politi politics of, of blocking each other, it won't work. PF, they, it failed to PF. They tried by all means to break, to block HH, to, but social media helped them. Because whatever happens, the information transmit just in second country world. Everyone is aware about whatever, whatever going on and what is happening in this country. So now, if they yes, try to come up with this. Konda, you're straying away from the, from, the, from the topic that we have. So as you can see, Elizabeth says uh, we're straying away from... Uh, you know today's topic but you are you're absolutely right yeah you, you are definitely right so anyway uh i will bring you back and uh we'll continue this discussion but i do agree with what you're saying one thousand percent so brother oswald wanted to chime in and just you know come back so uh, as usual everybody turn on your video and uh, here's a quick reminder to everybody watching us kindly share this live stream right now we need to have over 100 likes and i can see a lot of you watching us but why are you not really helping us spread the message i mean we're putting in a lot of work we've put in more than ten thousand hours and we've showed our dedication to you so you are mandated to help us you know spread the word it only takes one second of your life share it on your timeline and in five different facebook groups so 
let me get back to today's conversation. So today's uh, monologue that I had with you was obviously the propaganda uh, wars and basically mass psychology and the media. And I always keep on talking about influence and uh, the new intangible currency. You can't really stop it. You can't really uh, prevent it from having its effect. And this is why the Patriotic Front had to go out of their way to buy your top 10 musicians. And by the way, let me also take you back to 2011 when the people fell in love with Mark II. Mark II was uh, pro-PF. And, uh, you know, he had influence. He, he, he sang, he did songs, you know, he did uh, chant and just basically rally behind Michael Sata. He used his influence. Dandy crazy. The same thing happened. You know, you know, that time everything was going crazy. That's why the Copala people had, uh, you know, aligned themselves with the patriotic front and they were able to progress along with the patriotic front because they used their influence back in the day to propel the agenda. So, Every political environment has got influencers, people who've got the, 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 the prowess, the will to reach different masses and just, you, you know, you, 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 you can't hold influence. As much as there's groundwork, you know, background and all that stuff. But nowadays, the way digital uh, media is very influential because what people talk about on the ground is coming from social media from the digital ways of accessing information you understand so getting back to avena alice lenshina avena adamson mushala and modern day people such as laura miti pilato uh, and all these other influential people who played a key role if it wasn't for the media freedoms that we have had they would have been probably exiled by the way pilato was exiled before he was in South Africa for a very long period of time. But since there is the power of uh, independent media, right, he was able to give his side of the story and he was able to defend himself and he was able to break the shackles of the propaganda that could have been used against him. And this is one of the reasons why the PF had to, you know, have a monopoly over ZNBC and all these other different independent media because they knew the importance of media and the propaganda, the propaganda uh, wars and just basically how you can use propaganda to propel your message to the next level. So how do you get to tame the narrative, controlling the narrative in a very mature way? Because if you have a rebuttal, right? Uh, let's say some somebody says something out, outrageous about you, right? And you've got the 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 numbers you've got the influence the power to like uh, rebuttal and just give your side of the story right to some extent you are controlling the narrative while you know not being a dictator about it so how will zambian uh political parties and the political arena be able to adopt you know to survive in this type of new terrain that they are playing in without infringing on other people's rights and giving the illusion by the way, let me not use the word illusion because if I use the word illusion, it could have a negative connotation. So how do you make the masses feel like they've got the rights, but at the back end, you are controlling the narrative? You understand? Because if you just go full-blown di uh, dictator, like the way the patriotic front uh, did you are probably going to get lost in the sauce and you're probably not, people are going to detest you. People are going to, you know, think you're crazy and you're going to lose the favor of people. So how do you do it in a very good, mature way? This is why you need to have people like me. <laughs> I'm joking. But anyway, you understand, right? You, you, you get the point, right? So talking about influence, it's very important to decipher what type of influence certain characters exude. For example, whose idea was it for Iris Kayingu to stand as an MP? But patriotic front. Whose idea was it for Madame Kanduluwa to be the running mate of Edgar Lungu? Do you know the type of vibe she puts off with regards to our students? Unza. 
CBU, colleges. Do you know what she did to the meal, to all these different allowances? Whose idea was that? Who was uh, advising the patriotic front? It's important to decipher the type of influence that people exude. And I'm, I'm probably going to have uh, an argument with uh, Abena Chilufia Tayali, but I'll just use him as a prime example because, you know, he's a very well-known man. For example, Chilufia Tayali, polarizing character, he's got the numbers, but what, what's his message? What's Chilufia, Chilufia Tayali's message? When I go on his page, right, Nishibu Kombe, is he a reality TV star? Is he a party president? Is he an MP? What's the message? So getting to understand influence and being able to say, okay, uh, this particular character, his influence is in this way. You understand? Because people like Chilufia Tayali fail to convert their uh, audience because we don't know what's going on. Is is he a shibukombe? Is he about, does he give family? Is he a marriage counselor? Is he an MP? It's all over the place. You understand? So getting to measure influence and being able to say, okay, this character, we've got character A, what type of influence, which areas is he most influential in and how can we harness him? That's how you strategize. Now, getting back to Patriotic Front and Madame Kandalu. Honestly, so I don't even know what type of uh, thinking these people were. She could, she can't convert the youths. You can't convert the youths with Madame Kandalu. Why? She's got bad history, bad blood with the youths. The youths, CBU owns her. The youths don't like Madame Kandalu. She's got negative influence over them. That's the person you make as your running mate. Come on, gentlemen. You understand? So it's very important to analyze. If you've got a political organization, you look at your key players. All right, okay. Uh, 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 politician A, what type of influence does he have? What's his stronghold in this type of influence that he has? How can we use him to convert more numbers? Remember what I told you, right? There's only three types of audiences that you need to convert with regards to selling your manifesto as a political party. You've got your staunch political supporters, right? These van to win. You've got the undecided voters and you've got the followers of your, oppos your, your opponents, the other political parties. So how do you get to finesse and make sure that these other people come to your side? Those are the different strategies that you're supposed to be uh, using and you're supposed to use influence as a currency in modern day 2021, 2022 ETC. Now, getting back to the power of uh, uh, influence and how basically you can be able to sort of uh, turn things around, right? A lot of people are going to be saying, look, Vamona, these are million dollar secrets and you're giving them away for free. My brother, my sister, <laughs> I'm a marketer. I'm a business developer. You see, thing, the, the things that people pay for, people pay for order. As much as I can give you like million dollar advice here and there, it's all over the place. You know, it's all over the place. You know, you're probably not going to use any, you know, probably going to maximize uh, the knowledge and the experience that I have because I'm all over the place. You know, people pay for order and a well-packaged product. That's sales 101, converting 101. Okay, so if you look at most influencers on YouTube, sorry, I digress. They've got tutorials on different topics, but it's all over the place. But they've got courses on the back end, which is properly symmetrically, uh, symmetrically lined up in a digestible manner. As much as I can give you million dollar type of advice, right? So long as it's all over the place, a lot of you will probably not use it. Remember, I'm a statistics guy. I'm a numbers guy. I know the average and how to use statistics to my benefits. Okay, now getting back to the patriotic front. The patriotic front is probably going to dis uh, disintegrate in the next, uh, you know, four, eight years. You know why? Hypergamy. Hypergamy. What is hypergamy? And what is political hypergamy? Political hypergamy is... Uh, uh, the illusion of clinging on to power when you cannot feasibly be able to harness what you previously had. 
Now, here's the conundrum and here's the dilemma that the patriotic front and most ruling parties have is uh, how do you get to mobilize and be able to be effective using minimal resources? If, let's say, for example, you were Abakasaka Kandalama and uh, people were in love or people had uh, the perception that, ah, Zona Bakamba Baboma and Lusamonga Baponena, once a good yam. Look at the dollar situation. Bus drivers, taxi drivers, um, marketeers, they knew that Boma, when, whenever Boma and Lusambo is having a rally, Tora Diamo Fishirikiti. Remember that uh, Antonio Mwanza, you know, remark when the PF were holding their rallies. They were big dogs. But now, check this out. The Patriotic Front members at this particular moment, right, they are conservative with money. Now they've become penguins. You know why? Because Boma Nusambo can't really splurge at this particular moment because, number one, he's got dodgy issues going on in the back end. He's... Uh, role as an MP is probably questionable. His business partners are slightly dipping in because he understands their business partners understand that they are losing grip, uh, the, the grip of influence. The funders of the Patriotic Front, a lot of them are probably dipping. There's probably like a few people who are funding the Patriotic Front at this particular moment. So the problem is political hypergamy. So basically hypergamy is a notion that, uh, you know, women can't really debt lower. Let me give you a practical example. Who drives a Lamborghini or a BMW? It's hard for that woman to start dating a man who drives a Corolla or somebody who drive or who rides a bicycle. It's called hypergamy. And it's very common with women. Once a woman starts dating a man of certain caliber, right? Certain status, it's hard for her to date down. It's called hypergamy. Research that. So what am I trying to uh, what, what am I trying to say? Political hypergamy is what kills most ruling political parties in Zambia. These political parties and the influential people, they're not really going to be operating at that high level of proficiency with regards to resources. Now they've got a situation of minimizing and utilizing minimal resources. How is Bom and Lusambo going to be able to appease the NATO forces? with minimal resources. He's not really as liquid as he was. It's a fact. We've got Intel. He's probably lost some business connections and some inflow of money. So now he needs to be, he needs to be very sober. He needs to be very, um, he needs to be tactical, innovative. But how do you do that when you are the man, the, the once mighty Abakasaka Kandalama? And this is why ruling parties eventually fizzle out and die. It's called political hypergamy. Research that, you know? So if, if they are not really going to know how to use minimal resources, and if the UPND says, okay, Bane, uh, let's, let's kill the patriotic front right now. Let's, let's throw in uh, dynamite in their environment. You know what the UPND can do? They'll just say, well, we're ac accepting defections and we're only going to accept the top 15 uh, influential people of the patriotic front. Do you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is the political twerkers, people with no integrity. I bet you Boman Lusambo would sell his hand to join the UPND. I can tell you the top 10 uh, patriotic front people would die to join and uh, defect to the UPND. And that's how you can kill the UPND. That information was for free. <laughs> You're welcome. But anyway, I digress. So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is political hyper, uh, hypergamy is going to kill the patriotic front. And uh, it's something that can really uh, make us have uh, ineffective opposition. You know, ineffective opposition, what does that mean? It means... Uh, let's say if uh, the UPND gets drunk in power, because that's very, it can easily happen. But I really believe uh, our beloved uh, president, His uh, Excellency, uh, uh, Haka Indehichilema, I'm sure he's, he's not really doing this for power. 
you know, because he's he's got a lot of uh, resources. He's I believe he's uh, in the political arena because he's got a genuine motivation to improve the majority of Zambians. But mind you, President Haka in the Hichilema is but one person. Gary Combo is but one person. The rest of these other UPND people, these are the ones who've never tested power. They can easily be corrupted by the illusion of power. You understand? So this is one of the reasons why as much as we're happy, we're clapping, and we're, uh, you know, having summer sorts, uh, we need to make sure that we've got a healthy opposition. So, you know, but anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? So, yeah, the mass psychology of Zambian politics and the propaganda wars. So how is the UPND going to be able to use media to their advantage? I don't know. How is the Patriotic Front going to be able to use the media to their advantage and, uh, you know, do what they have to do? I do not really know. And do I think the Patriotic Front have got the brain power to do this? I absolutely doubt it. Why do I say that? Because previously they had all the tools in the, in the workshop. What did they do? They squandered everything. You know what they did? They invited some dodgy analysts to give us fake projections. Do you remember those projections about the election results? <laughs> that was so that that was so bootleg of them. But what do you expect? These guys have got no prowess of uh, learning to read the temperature of the room. I've said it probably a number of times. They do not know how to read the temperature of the room. They are incapable of doing that. This is one of the reasons why they had to use Nkandulu as a running mate. Surely. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. She's got bad blood with the youth. How are you going to be able to do that? You know? Anyway, uh, Brother Oswald, uh, by the way, gentlemen, share this video. Brother Oswald, welcome to the show. Uh, your final additions before we close the show. Then we're also going to have Brother Moses. Sorry, I, I lost the connection, uh, but at least I'm, I'm still following even in the background. Yeah, um, I, I know I had a lot just that I came late <laughs> and, and, and op hopefully during the week I'll be able to connect because of my commuting to and from work. I think I'm, I'm knocking off late. It has been difficult for me to come in, uh, to, um, to be connecting. Yeah, um, if media influence, I, I think one thing maybe just like I said, what happened in 12 August is a lesson both for people who want to be in politics in future or people who are joining politics now, as well as to the current uh, government uh, of His Excellency HH, uh, HH7. Why the, the media influence definitely need not to be ignored. It's very cardinal. But you know, in the on the media, it's like Pachishala. You find all sorts of things. Some things may be useless, some things may be useful. But it's very important one has to sit down and sort out what's useful and what's not useful. Then uh, there are many people, you talked of Tayari. Um, frankly speaking, I also fail to understand his direction. The guy seems to be influential, but seems something somewhere tends to influence him against his own beliefs. And, and I feel sometimes maybe some people pay him to do some propaganda. Sometimes maybe feel he can entice some resources do, do, for him to fulfill something. As a result, he has no stance. And I think in the recent one or two years, he made a number of um, wrong decision or wrong political decision. If you look at his analysis one, two years ago, it's practically exactly different from what he was talking about what's happening now he's one of the people that stood and say hh will never be a president but hh is a president now and there's no shame to face and say okay i was wrong so influence is very key in everything that you're doing but one thing about influencing people i wanted to give a practical example of mwanawasa you know mwanawasa came uh, as a very unpopular president okay Mwanawasa was not popular, even, you know, that time there was no social media and so forth. I know some of us, we are young, but this is something I learned from Mwanawasa. You know, when you influence people, first you need to learn from them. 
most of the people who influence people, they will try to listen to what people do they what, what do what do they need? What is it that people want to talk about? What are the challenges people are facing? Then you start addressing such issues. This will make even HH to go further if he sits down and listen to what the people are saying. I, I don't know. I feel he's doing that because he has liberated the, the media platforms such that when people are expressing themselves, he's able to pick what are the people talking about, what are the people's expectations. This is what made Mwanawasa from being unpopular. Remember, Mwanawasa was voted, I think, less than 30%. Uh, he had, I think, that less than 30% of the vote casted. You know, that's being unpopular, you, you need to see. But it made him to be one of the popular. By the time he died, that's when people realized Manawasa was good for, for the country. Because he sat down and listened, what do people want? That's how he influenced people to, to start supporting him. If Manawasa was to stand even for third term, I can assure you would have gone through. Anyway. May he so rest in peace. He has wisdom in, in his own way. Those are the lessons that I want to give, that I want to share with the people who want to be join politics today. The other thing that may be, that I'm not comfortable, frankly speaking, look at the current opposition. PF, you can't count it as an opposition political party at the moment. Yes, for the sake of democracy or for the sake of us, yes. But for me, in terms of uh, caliber, in terms of principles and so forth, they are bad for this country. Sorry to say this, because they were advised in many ways and they didn't want to listen. They had an opportunity to change things and they didn't listen. And they started propaganda. Imagine you are in government and you start propaganda. All sorts of lies, which has backfired against them, which is very bad. And I don't feel they are capable of being that um, opposition that can stand on their principles. No. They are demonstrating now everything is vengeance and so forth, which is very bad. For me, I feel they are bad. And I feel PF is dying very soon. Because even if they are blending, you know, they are not honest to themselves. Just, is it yesterday, uh, one of the senior person in PF saying, Zambian have regretted voting for HH. When in actual sense, people that voted for HH, we've given him time. You can't see results in critical issues in 100 days. That's a lie. For HH, for us to see results, it will take three, four years. In fact, from the economic point of view, for us to see the benefit of the policies now, it might take even seven, eight, nine years. Maybe, maybe the time even HH had gone. That's when we'll start seeing some benefits. It's now people are seeing the benefit of Manawas. Some of them, they never even experienced it. You know, So these are the lessons we need to learn as youths. But I wish I could say much, but let me leave it here. I know I've got a lot in my in my heart, yeah. but then anyway, we'll, I'm sure we'll, there will be time we'll, for me to... We'll, we'll bring it back. We'll bring it back to you. Uh, Brother Moses, you uh, still on, on topic. Influence, uh, media, propaganda, Alice Lenshina, uh, Adamson Mushala. Your take. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Yes, I answered that I have nothing over RC, but through what you have, you had prayed there, uh, and the story from our forefathers. Okay, let's talk I about uh, influence. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, influence and how it can be harnessed. Uh, that's what do you think about I'm influence? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. That's where I'm coming. So from what you have prayed there, it is giving us some lessons whereby we should learn. These things like Aris and Mushara, these people were, uh, I can say, straightforward because they had the focus to maybe to have some point to talk to the current government by then of the, the Reti Kaunda whereby you have an opposition who can take accountability and give you directive for the wrong things you are doing so that at least when you, you have got here to listen to from them, you listen and then you, you correct the wrong things you are doing. Yes, okay. But Moses, let, let me, let me uh, catch you there because um, 
uh, I really do not like talking about generic things. I, I don't like talking about things that everybody talks about. That's one thing that Z Corner tries to do. We love to tackle and uh, go in places that people do not uh, usually go. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip. I understand that I respect where you're trying to go. Now let's do this. Let's flip it over. Pilato. Okay. Brother Moses, if uh, yeah. we didn't have the privilege of uh, social media and uh, having independent media and the Patriotic Front won, how would Pilato been painted if uh, Zambia didn't have uh, independent media and if the Patriotic Front won? Very bad, very bad. I remember, I recall even Mr. Is it Siroe? Siroe? Is another sure. person who freed from this country, yes, and he went away because of the same system. So this social media has worked also, uh, especially for us Zambians during 12 August. It has made something which was ZNBs was hindering, not to show even maybe giving platform to other political parties, but. Through other media, uh, Diamond and other, uh, they had that privilege. Uh, even this uh, so-called Jama WhatsApp and other things, it has contributed. Uh, it has made a plus uh, for this uh, uh, 12 August 2021 general election. Ah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Good, good, good. All right, okay. So, Brother Oswald, if the Patriotic Front won and... Uh, if uh, we had no media, what do you think Zambians in 20, 15 years, 20, 30 years could have been talking, saying about uh, Pilato, Laura Miti, uh, and everybody that was influ influential and uh, posed a threat to the patriotic front? Um, I know, uh, you, know you know, it's, it's a 50 50 situation. One, yeah, many people that would have thought maybe uh, Miti and Pilato are bad people because maybe they would have given an advantage to PF to promote their propaganda or now these people were bad. At least social media has made it uh, a number of people to, to open up to say, oh, in fact, the government here is wrong. These people are right. And, you know, when you look at Pilato, I think most of us came to know him through his music. Though in, even in this controversial way, it, it does it. You realize that it requires somebody with a certain level of intelligence to understand it. It's not a music you can understand by listening with a beat and to start following it. It's a music that requires a certain objective mind, kind of. Um, I don't know the best word I can use. You know, it, it's like it requires some level of objectivity in order for you to understand the message and so forth. It's not like a music that entertains, you know. Um, so it would have been a very tricky and awkward situation. Thank God, I think social media is able to counter that and put things in its right place and say, this is the reality, this is the situation. And I think for me, I like it and I wish them the best. In their lives. Definitely. So, uh, going back to Brother just, Moses. Brother just Moses. There, Mr. Moon. Just yes, there, Mr. Different... Moon. All right, okay. Well, on my brother there, the point. The music of uh, Pirato, I think it's just the same like the music of uh, like Dove the Late. E educative music type of it. Thank you. All right, okay. So, Brother Moses. Yes. Uh, we all understand that... Uh, Having um, Aris Kayungu stand as an MP for Mwandi constituency was uh, one of the worst uh, decisions that the Patriotic Front made because, number one, they lost a potential, you know, uh, seat in parliament. So why do you think, based on everything that we've talked about with regards to influence, why do you think it was... Uh, it wasn't smart for them to have a person like uh, Iris Kaingo. Why do you think, with regards to the influence that Iris Kaingo, and mind you, I already explained the type of influences people have and how you can harness them and, uh, you know, uh, predict or sort of uh, demarcate a level and type of influence in a specific niche. So 
why do you think having a person like Arias Kayingu was uh, something that uh, you know amateur political uh, an amateur political party can do? And, and uh, by amateur, I mean in terms of uh, strategy, execution, reading the temperature of the room, having that foresight. You know, can you can you talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about that. Uh, maybe retro on that point. Uh, the, uh, I can give you an example, just like you, Mr. Muna. The way we, you have come up with this Z corner and the way you are coming out, in the future maybe, you might have that intention to stand, to be maybe a member of parliament or the future which I leader. Not, by the way. Yeah, which Listen, I do not. By the way, to set the record straight, uh, I do not have any intentions yes, of being a minister, uh, standing I'm as an MP. Uh -huh. but yeah, I'm just on. I'm just giving an example, maybe even the president in the future. But your records, your behavior, your attitude matters also. You have elaborated very well looking at the former uh, running mate, uh, uh, Madam Ru. Uh, if we compare what had uh, transpired uh, during uh, uh, his tenure, when he was a minister of higher education to the university, uh, uh, talking about uh, meal, meal allowance and other things, that can, didn't even make a merit to support so that the PF might, be, might uh, uh, win the election. It made a depreci depreciation from the support PF had. <laughs> Because yes, of but, the kind of the person. Be more specific. Yes. I want you to be more specific. Like, let's look at Iris Kayingo. Why was it a bad idea yeah. and an, an amateur move by Patriotic Front to make her stand as an MP? Why? Can I come in on that one? Yes, brother, also come yeah. in. Maybe. Yeah, you know, that, that, for me, that was a political suicide. You know, um, when you are making decision, especially of the political nature that will affect the nation, it's better you pick people who've got um, some stamina or people who've got certain level of caliber that is admirable. I think when you look at Alice, I think she 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 needs a lot of transformation. Iris. 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 Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You know, for me, whoever made that decision, I think, I don't know what was going in their head. I think that was a political suicide. Yes, but why uh, wasn't she able to convert? Why? 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 You know, um, okay, whatever happens, we, we are all sinners. We are all, we've all made mistakes before and so forth. But how you transform from a mistake to, to that person people can look up to, I think it's, it's, it's something that takes a lot of wisdom, a lot of, um, you know, transformation take, it's a process. And I, I feel she never went through that process to get the, the, the I think to get that, uh, out, what word can I use? You know, she never went through that process for people to entrust her to say, oh, she's a changed person. Okay, that happened. It was a mistake and so forth. Look at uh, one minister, I think, also something similar thing happened, right? Okay. right? Uh, okay, you get back to that, but let me just uh, uh, yeah. paint it because you missed some points that I really wanted to drive in. Uh, and, of yeah. course, we're not talking about her past, the questionable thing that she did in the past. We're talking about yes. 2021, 2019, 2018, the Irish Kayungo of 2018, 2019, 2021, 2020. The reason why Irish cannot convert and be a very good representative on an MP level is the type of influence she has on her followers. You see, Iris Kayingu uh, is known for flaunting her body. So the type of influence, she, she attracts uh, a certain level of influence with regards to how she markets herself. We all saw the recent you know, pictures in, in, in December, November 2021 with her sisters. The way she gets influence and followers is people who love to be lured by her body, you know, her questionable pictures. So on a political level, she's got zero influence. But when it comes to selling a bikini, selling 
you know, skirts, selling designer where she's got 100% influence. So in the beginning, I told you the level of influence that you need to use is specific. You need to have specific niches to convert. It's more like in business development and in marketing, we have to be able to target a specific niche in order for a certain product to convert and in order for you to have certain thresholds with regards to your, you know, P&L. So the type of influence that Iris Kayingo has, if you go on her Facebook, she gets hundreds of likes and all that stuff. It's not because of the political audience. It's because of a certain demographic of our country that loves her for either her body, the way she looks, the way, you know, she makes them feel. So you can't you really say she's got political influence. So when they decided to make her Mwandi MP and an aspiring Mwandi MP, I was like, these guys are absolutely dunderheads. Uh, I mean, no, no disrespect, but it is what it is, you know. So the type of influence that she has, if I was, you know, uh, a designer, a fashion designer, I'd probably use Iris Kayingo. If I had uh, bikini, uh, bikinis on sale, I'd probably use Iris Kayingo because that's her influence. That's the audience that she has. You understand? So it's very important to understand the politicians that you have and the influence that you have over them. Now, let's get back to Chilufi Atayali because you're going to be saying, oh, you're attacking women and you're body shaming and all that stuff. Let's look at Chilufi Atayali. Chilufi Atayali's audience is all over the place. Niva Shivu Kombe, family counselor, he's an, a president, he's an MP aspiring guy. So his influence is it's all over the place and it's, it's, it's neutralized. It's not, that's why it's going to be hard for people to entrust him with uh, specific political huge roles because the way he packages and the way he packages and uh, presents his brand, it's, it's, it's not effective. So having specific influence and having specific demographics will allow you to convert in, in ways that you can. So having uh, Iris Kayungu stand as an MP in Mwandi when she should be, you know, she should be modeling in a bikini. I, I, I just don't understand these people. The only way you can use Iris Kayungu in a political environment is when Let's say you're having uh, a conversion and you're going to be having performances. And then you say, you know, Iris is going to be here. She's going to be uh, modeling and she's going to be doing some other, you know, media related type of stuff. She could be uh, in the media, in the media section of uh, a political party. She could work very well because she's good to look at. She's pleasant to look at and she attracts numbers like that. You can only use Iris Kayungu with regards to, you know, the, 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 the facial aspect of something, not really the fine tuning of a political political role you understand so it's very important to be able to demarcate the type of influence people have and how you can specifically use them but anyway uh let's bring over brother jason welcome back thank you so much i've just re i've just reached my farmhouse you know there's no power here no it's fine Some we can see you light. yeah because of the bad regime we kicked out, things were not moving at Avena Mundende. <laughs> yeah, what's your contribution? Brother Jason, you had some stuff you didn't finish telling us about. Yeah, I think uh, I can uh, put this one as my concluding remark. I just have to educate the masses, uh, those people actually uh, who are on the ground, that uh, these politicians, they should be understood properly. Yeah? They should be understood properly. We should know this politician as the marketers actually who find ways and means to market their party. So when we talk of propaganda, we shouldn't just take things for granted when they come on the media and to take them as gospel truth. Because at the end of the day, all they need is to have numbers on the ground. So what should they do now? They go to back to their drawing boards and say, okay, we are going to use uh, what the politicians call a manipulative and persuasive power at the same time to manipulate people's analysis. If we feed them with this information, the people are going to respond in this way because all they need is to build up numbers. So whenever we see an opposition coming on board, let us pay attention to what that opposition is 
talking about what that opposition is trying to tell us. We don't just have to say, ah, no, uh, ZNBC has given us the information, Utotuma broadcast to Mbuto, they are not substantial. Let us follow what is it, what ZNBC is talking about. So I should inform, I should remind the public to say, actually, the aim of the politicians is to make is to make a sale at the end of the day, so that they make a profit in the end. So it is not just anything the politicians broadcast that is gospel truth. We need to look at the other, other, other side of the story. And how do we do that? Is to pay audience to those other independent individuals who are giving us information like Avena Pilato, Fidafine Wales. And uh, maybe let me also say something about uh, PF having picked Tyler Sky in good to standards and him before Mwandi constituents. You know, ba, ba, ba Mona, ever trend that you book because all those marketing analysis you are making, I'm sure these guys they never had. Because they just look at they just looked at somebody as a celebrity. Oh no, Hairi Sky actually has got a follower on the social media. So if we take Hairi Sky, because I don't know how they combined the entertainment and all those bikini stars with politics. Because they saw that maybe people are going to <laughs> they are going to vote Katishina <laughs> Nimfeshi. I don't know. Eh? I don't know. There was a fuck up on that one. They misfired. There was a huge misinterpretation. And that's why there were rangos, because there were people actually who could see to say, no, 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 guys, actually what we are trying to do is not something right. And because somebody is a boss, he said, ah, no, I'll do what I feel like doing. That's why even in the company, if you are a boss, you undermine the advice of the marketing team. That's what happens. So the PF actually, they undermined the marketing aspect of their party. That's why they could pick on anything so long it appears to be a celebrity to, pull out, to, pull, to, to build up numbers. But what they forgot, they forgot the aspect of a particular, a particular niche. Eh? They forgot to say people, they have got other means of making analysis. If somebody is a celebrity in dancing, they don't have to take people for granted that they could uh, make that person to be a politician. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I think, he, I don't know, maybe Brother Pombo can pick up Yes, from... Brother Pombo, yeah, you're just coming through and we're about to conclude. <laughs> so yes, your conclusive yes. remarks with sorry, regards to the Sorry topic. for coming later. I was um, I was busy. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Good evening, Justin. Yeah, good evening to you, sir. Good All to right. see you. Thank you, Muna. Good evening. I've uh, I've been good following your, your 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 program. Quite interesting, and uh, I think the first part was a bit difficult when you're talking about the Mushala people and and uh, and uh, and. Uh, Lenshina story, it was not easy. It wasn't a, an easy discussion. But um, I would just allow myself with a few seconds that I have maybe to uh, uh, say something on uh, influencer, social influencer. In fact, even by the word itself, Mr. Mona, we have to distinguish between reality and to influence the people. Um, uh, maybe uh, following uh, uh, Jason's uh, uh, comment on on what can have po forced the PF to show to choose people like uh, you know uh, um, Iris Ka Kaingu, you know, um, it's the convincement that they had that they were going to win. Whoever was behind the social media of PF convinced the, um, the, the big fish up there that the situation was positive. And we have to remind this, I think what I observed myself, they started the nepotism. Nepotism in, in PF started growing um, uh, very, very high and high and high. 
Uh, you can see the son of uh, Chishimba Kambuil was promised. The sign of GBM was promised. The sign of Kaingu. Kaingu, the father, I, I don't remember the name, if you can help me. Yes, uh, from MMD era, I remember Mr. Kaingu. What's Mr. His Kaingu. Name? Kaingu. Yes, I remember him from Mr. the MMD era. He came from the Copa Bell Timuna. He was a Copa Laman. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, so now, Mr. Kaingu. Before the uh, August elections, the father, the father said he was coming back to support the uh, PF, the father, because the father went out of politics. So he said he was coming back. And when he said this to the public, actually what he was saying was this, give my daughter the job and I support for you. This was the, the trend. I think this trend... Uh, we could we could see it. it, it, it uh, GBM's uh, daughter, the same thing. The same thing about uh, President Lungu's daughter. Look at them, eh? the big fishes. They had uh, someone they were supporting, who they put on um, a, a key position during the campaign, uh, which which was a very wrong because they did not realize especially that they stopped the people from expressing their views. The Zambians were denied to express their opinion, their views. Hence, these people, they didn't know what was in the Zambian minds. All they could uh, listen to was the voice which was coming from the cadres, which was a very, very powerful voice. You are going to win. We are going to win. The Kalimanshi people, they assured them, you are going to have a vote here. People in the Copper Belt, I mean, for them, closing uh, those, the so-called, um, um, the so-called bedrooms, PF bedroom uh, areas like Copper Belt, Muchinga, Luapula, all those areas there, Northern province, Eastern province, they thought by not allowing these guys to penetrate in these areas, things were okay. Who were assuring them here? We come back to the topic that you have been discussing. Influence, social influence, social media influence. The ones who were convincing the PF leaders were the, this, the fake social media influence in the PF, which were not giving them the true the true um, um, feedback from the Zambian people. Why it wasn't the true feedback from the Zambian people? Because they could not listen to the Zambian people, the real, the ordinary Zambian people's complaints. They could not listen to them. We were shut out. We, were, we could not express our views. When you say things are not going well, Listen to the youth. Listen to the plight of the teachers. Teachers are crying. Policemen are crying. Listen to them. Doctors, the last incident was to, 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 to fire a doctor. Where on earth these people? Where are they, where are they getting the information? To convince themselves that let us just shut up. This doctor, we fire him. And they were thinking that the... The, 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 the group of doctors were, were going to and listen to them? No, no. It was all wrong. Now, the influence, social influence, here I would also, I would do myself, my point can be, Mr. Muna, uh, to, to uh, distinguish. We need very, very much to distinguish between the two things, reality and influence. Like... Uh, you know, I don't talk too much about, uh, you know, I, I've seen that you have discussed in this evening. Also, Siawan, Kaingo, and all this, this Alice. Um, on uh, Siawan, I don't try, I don't discuss this gentleman because he's not a Christian. I am a Christian. Siawan is not a Christian. He's the one who says this. So it's very dangerous for me as a Christian it's very dangerous to discuss with somebody who is not a Christian. So I respect whatever he does for his uh, profession and whatever he does for his uh, uh, becoming very popular. And so the, what I could say is, especially to the young people, be careful, young people. 
Um, here in Italy, they say, not all that sparkles is gold. When you see the sparkling material, not all that sparkles is gold. Some of them might be a marriage. Some of them might be just a plastic, you know, uh, giving you a very funny, uh, well, you might you may imagine and you think that I have found God. So not all of it is God. Why do I say this? We need to be very much careful, especially if this country called Zambia is, is, is termed to be a Christian nation. If we are a Christian nation, I think we need to be extra careful. And uh, let us look to the examples that can give us, like Jason. Jason, I can see, is a, is a man who I think loves uh, to, to quote the Bible. He loves, he, he loves studying um, the scriptures, which I also love studying the scriptures. I've studied philosophy. I've studied theology. And, um, and I, I, I don't like the people when they, they lie to the... What, what made the people to fall, the PF to fail is lying to the Zambians. The Zambians are no more illiterate. illiterate. If you lie to them, they look at you and you, they say, I will revenge, I will express my view on a ballot paper. When you, you shut them up. Now, uh, why do I say Siawan, he can be a very good influencer on social media. He did his part on the campaign. Well, yes and no. Uh, um, I cannot expose, I cannot comment on that one. Everyone in Zambia think they did their part. Some people underground, very silently. Other people, they expose themselves very but much. So, do you know, Brother Oscar, how to solve that problem? Yeah. Do you know how to solve it? Because I can tell uh, I don't you how, know. how to solve it. Because you me. see, <clears throat> there's reality. Yes, uh, we are Christians and uh, the... Uh, Siawan's practices, he, no, no. he, he's he got, you know, questionable practices, but he still has influence. You cannot deny that. The only yeah. way that you can solve that, you see, when it comes to influence and popularity, you can't de detect what people, or rather dictate what people like or do not like. The only way to solve that concern that you have is to outdo Siawan. We no, no. To have a no. character. No, no, my dear. No, 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 no. It's a no, wrong. No, listen, it's a, listen, a, listen, listen. We, in order to have a person who other people can look to and uh, you know, so that uh, you can neutralize mm -hmm. CR1, we need yes, somebody who does me, more numbers than CR1. Me, somebody who yeah. can have the same. Uh, otherwise, like that, yeah. you you Brother have to Muna. tell people uh, not Brother to follow Muna. CR1 unless there's Brother another Muna. character that outperforms CR1. Brother Mona, that's how it works. Yes, Brother, Brother Mona, uh, let me chip in there. I think uh, you've got a point. Uh, Brother Mpopo uh, brings out a very important issue to say. Uh, you know, okay, Siawan did his part actually to speak for the Zambians, to open up Zambians, and actually to advocate for the reform of a, of a Zambian country. So now the issue here that we are having that Brother Mpombo has brought to say, you know, it is uh, not good, if I can be direct, to keep entertaining Siawan actually, to keep persuading, influencing people to get inclined actually, especially to the current government that we have, because, you know, there are those question marks, there are those... Uh, yes. Yes, that we are that trying we, to say. We, we agree with that. It's very dangerous. Your point, your point I, you mentioned, Chilufiatari, we've got a very vibrant, actually, a, a very charisma, a local, I, I don't know, a local media personnel who is Chilufiatari. But look at uh, where the weakness lies in Chilufiatari, because it's all over. And like you said, yeah? We don't he, has no, he has no identity. He has no yeah. identity. That's, that's why that, I, I don't know, Brother Pombo, I don't know if you are following. When I was commenting on uh, the PPF engaging the musicians, because musicians, you know, they are meant to be speaking for the people, like the Lucky Doobers like the Bob Marley's, like the Piquet Chalas. But because of lack of integrity, to because talk of lack of reality, reality. to talk yeah. about reality. Exactly. Yeah. 
So, right. you know, brother, brother Mpombo, you know, people run away from talking about reality when there is no integrity in them, which means they have got a compromising moral fiber within them. So now, the, the only way that we can do away with CR1, if we don't want him to get uh, so much involved, we need to have somebody stable, actually, who can stand to be speaking for the Zambians, to be opening Zambians, their minds of what is happening. And to have be the same numbers, have yes, the same yes. viewers and numbers. That's the uh, only yes. way you can tell no, the, the no, you can no, visualize it. No, it no. is like... What can brother, I do? brother no, Oscar, brother, if somebody brother, can oh, have 20,000 viewers and he says something and you've got... Viewers, listen, listen, Mr. Mona, Mr. Mona, Mr. Mona, listen. If you know, Siawan is a very good uh, manipulator. Well, don't force me to speak to on 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 the character and the philosophy and the, the psychology of this young man. He's a manipulator, and uh, just to tell you, he's very he is very dangerous. That then, is correct. That is correct. Dangerous. But he has got when the influence. Said, when, when he told <laughs> the Zambians, is not when he told the Zambians, I'm going to pray this evening, and Chishimba Kambuli is going to die. You know, this pile, this guy is very dangerous, and uh, and people they thought yes, they thought it was we true. Agree, but he's got people, the people influence. Thought, people thought they were, is true. But now that just that that thing he said. So, <laughs> What do you think we can do in order to to yes. take to take Siawan out of our political tables? What do you think first we can thing, do? First, thing, yes, we cannot take away Siawan from the 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 Zambia scene. We cannot. That's the first yes. thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing, we just need the 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 uh, you know, gentlemen. The move of this president, I really appreciate him because the first step he has uh, really um, moved on is to give free education to the to the people. Why education? If you want now the key, how you can get rid of this gentleman? Education. When you get educated, Mr. Muna. And but Jason influence. and the Zambians and followers, listen, please, please let me finish. When you okay. get educated, you will see such people, they have no say in Europe. They have no influence. And they will just laugh at them and they will say, this is fucking rubbish. Come on. All right. What are you okay. talking about? So, okay, so education, no education, right? They no, have no, no, no. because of education, Mr. Mona. Because how can you think you think Jagaban, the king of Africa? What 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 are you talking about? What okay, are brother, you I, I think about? brother Oka uh, is not understanding influence and morality. We are talking about influence and making something popular. Okay, yes. let me give an example yes. of uh, you remember we had the uh, Lever Brothers flooding our grocery market in the recent past. Yes. You remember? Yes. Yes. Now, what has happened? We have now trade kings, actually, which is becoming so influential in grocery business in Zambia, and it has uh, kicked out almost, almost kicking out Liver Brothers product because of inf influencing now the masses. Yes, 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 and making their products popular. So this is what we are saying. We cannot we because if you if you are if you are if you have the similar product because you are we, we are selling soap and Lever Brothers is also selling soap. So now what should we do in order to make this our product penetrate the market? This is why we are saying that it is now for us Zambians just to education. wake up. Education. Wake up, yes, yes, brother. My brother, friends, let me finish. My friends, let's get education and yes. let's education get without everybody knows Coca Cola kills, but it's popular. Ed education yes. does influence yes. is more important that's than education. Why, that's why, in places like Italy, you won't see the people, you won't see the publicity of Coca Cola. You won't. 
Do you know why you don't you don't find publicity by Coca Cola like we find it in Zambia? Do you know why? Because these people cannot be manipulated. I when I go to the doctor myself, I've been told not to take. Sorry, well, ah, anyway, I'm not campaigning or campaigning. Sorry, get me correct, please. Okay, I have been told, please buy your health, don't touch Coca Cola. I won't say what I've been told. I'm just saying. My doctor says, please, your health, man, because I'm a huge person, eh? you can see. For my health, they say, please, that don't touch it for your health. Now, if, if I continued with my ignorance, not knowing the properties which are in that drink, for my health, please, I'm talking only about my health and not each and everyone's uh, opinion. For my health, it's not good. For my health. Now, we, if I was ignorant, I would say, you would tell me, Mr. Mona, no. But, okay, but who's going to educate the people and have Brothers, a bigger voice? I'm a, you, I'm a you oh. is very good. I'm a you is very good. It's good for you, but Mona, no. it might not yeah, be good for who's me. Who's going to do that? Who's going to educate? Who? Who will uh, educate? No. Well, here comes now. Here comes now the reality. Where do I get the real the real properties contained in that drink or in that food. I, I am now given now, my education allows me to go and do, first of all, my personal research because I care you for see, my pe life. People don't first. care. People don't do personal research. You're not going to force people to do personal research and know, okay, this, this man, he's got ulterior and, uh, uh, and, other and, motives. And, this is going to help now. This is our, I think we people, some of in me, myself, I allow myself to speak like this because I did not receive help. By then, when I was in grade eight or grade seven, I did not receive much help from people who went up. I came abroad. I stay here for many years. I am giving them much information to the young people to distinguish between influence and reality. We are talking about Zambia to sustain itself economically and politically, not by an influencer. Look at what is happening in Zambia. For the, under <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. peer Brother Oscar, regime, I'm sorry to say this, but you're not getting it. Brother, brother um, Oscar. Brother Oscar. Yeah. Yes. How, do you think, how, how do you think you can make a certain product to be popular? By propaganda. By propaganda. Sometimes when you are doing, so when you are doing marketing, when you are doing marketing, that's influence? why they say when, when they say marketing is is by propaganda. By propaganda. We have yes, we yes. have my, my boss. We have that boy. We have that boy in Zambia. That boy. That boy who is a, a black white boy. Who is that boy? We have that white black white boy uh brother jason your 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 uh phone is producing that sound as well i don't know whether you can change the way your position maybe try holding it like uh not near the speaker or something am i audible have, enough now better we have that we have that boy in zambia a white black boy he says he's not black he says he's white but i think he's black so now that that is called influence to influence the people. There but the numbers ways. does that boy have the same numbers as uh, as uh, CR one, brother uh, Oscar? Uh, for me, influence for me, for, only influence me. can can kill influence. There's no yeah, two but, ways about it. But, no matter how much you want people to do self education, it only influence can kill influence. No two yeah, ways but, about it. Uh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that we go for that. We, we, we take that road. I wouldn't say that we take that road. I think if at all there is but someone that's who can, can stop, only work. well, if at all there is someone who can stop, is um, the, the government itself to start focusing on what is credible and uh, not on what is in our imagination. You know, do you know why I speak very strongly against this man? I want to we nominate. Under his, we understand. You know we, are, we understand no. and we agree. But influence is influence, regardless of what you feel. He's got influence, no matter how much he's got negative, uh, whatever things that he's doing, he still has the influence. 
the patriotic front tried to do that. Yeah, hey, now the question yeah, is the question is how can we now how can we now undermine that influence which is how so influential? How can we out out this is that, if it is in business? I'm selling soap, brother Oscar. You also got soap which is already on the market. How do I now suppress your influence? Is by yes. investing money. In advertising, I need to do marketing and so that exactly. I influence, so that I make my product popular. Now, if I neglect the aspect of making my product popular by doing marketing, by investing in, uh, in advertisement, it will mean my product will never penetrate. I will never say let the people use their common whatever and they like. No, because I'm trying to persuade the, the masses actually to love my product, eh, to popularize my product. So the point is to be direct to the point is, for us, if we don't want to see people of such caliber actually to be entering into our affairs, this is now where Muna is saying, it is, uh, it, is, it, is, it is high time now Zambians should stand up clean, like the way Chirufia, Chirufia, uh, Chirufia is. Tari Chirufia, he can, if, he, if he can just stand on a, a, on a, a single on a single influence, he can be make a, he, he can make a very good do, he can make a very good actually influencer. Now the problem we have in Zambia is we don't have actually people as at now yes. who are influential. Eh? To neutralize yeah. oh, yes. that's the point. Probably, we, probably, we, probably, yeah. probably my, my, my dear friends, probably it's not that urgent um, to have such uh, personnel, such individuals. Probably it's not that urgent. What we have now is, you know, let's, uh, uh, well, if we just, uh, it's a, in terms, if it is just a question of discussion, I would give you credit. I know, Jason. I, I would give you credit what you're explaining, but we are talking about the status of our nation. This is what I am. I'm, I'm, I am we, concerned. We, we understand, myself. brother Oscar, but that status, such it, it can be outperformed by the influence of CR one. That's the point. We understand the status and our integrity and our sovereignty is at stake, but there's no other influencer to outperform CR one. No matter how much we want, we don't have anybody who can neutralize that. That's why we need to invest and have good marketing outperform the influence that CR1 has. That's the only way you can kill that thing that you're talking about. It won't go in people's hearts and they will, they will start researching it. You need to outperform the influence he has. Epela. Let us go to school. That's my solution. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, my brother Oscar, wait. My brother Oscar, when you are influenced, you put in a move and do it automatically. You say you put in a few move. You have to work. No, if you look at CR1. Do you know what I say? Do you know why I say this? Uh, because here uh, in Europe, they are very crazy influencers, you know, on social network. And uh, they are, actually, they are bil billionaires. They are billionaires, but they are, they are so so crazy people. And they are very dangerous to life, <laughs> you see. <laughs> but, yes. they are very, but, but they are very rich. And they have millions and millions of followers, my dear. Many. Yes. Okay, people yeah. are saying that we should let you finish your point. Anyway, finish your point on, on the education <laughs> part. <laughs> Finish your point, okay. brother Oscar. On My, education. Okay, what I'm saying, the solution, the solution. I, um, I would like, I think, the, the, the viewers to get me straight here. I have no authority to judge the individual. It's not my part to judge. I will never judge the individual. I will judge the actions if um, they are good or, or negative for um, the development of our country, the status of our nation. Mr. Muna and the viewers, we are not going to have an influence, a person who can fight maybe the popularity of, of this guy. We are not going to have that. And it's not so urgent. We don't. What we need is young boys and girls who can distinguish 
who can draw a thin line between white and black, we are seeing the same, this maybe the same color, because I don't know, and this this guy was so fortunate, huh? It was for, so fortunate because uh, he knew where the pend, pendulum pendulum where it was where it was siding. He knew very well. The pendulum left the PF and it was going on the other side. Even if it was not HH to win the 2021 elections, the one who was going to win was Chishimba Kambuli. Had he remained in the UPND, that guy, that guy would have had all the resources. Now, yes, now you're do. digressing for the, from the point. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go okay, the solution. Yes. My solution is this. My personal solution is this. We need to get informed, please. If we, I am, me, I'm informed. That's why I know that this guy is a manipulator. He manipulates. I, if he, if I can even watch, watch, look at him. I, I don't want to have any conversation with him because he's a manipulator. That's his business, and he makes money in manipulating the people. I don't want to make money in answering to a manipulator. No. I want to make money in a hard work. And influence is influence. Yeah, putting your feelings and your beliefs. <laughs> but me, I don't want to become a millionaire by being an influencer. But the majority of people, it, that, that's where influence, that's where influence comes no, in. No, where can Zambia go if you are going to base on the influencers, please? We know, where but we that's going? why they are influencers, Zikavidi. Yeah, <laughs> but you are, so you are asking me, how do we fight them? Mueve na Zambia, let us go to school. You will distinguish it, between. So right now, you will, you're saying, the Zambians yes. are going to distinguish between. See, a one when he says, I am going to tell you God, a uh, uh, Bible truth. When he says Bible truth, he's quoting the Bible. When he says Jagaban truth, he's quoting his father, who is not a Christian, who is not Jesus Christ. He's a man in Nigeria. Distinguish these things. Please. Brother Oscar. So right now, let me give you a practical example. Right now, we've got uh, about uh, 350 people watching us. You've said that, right? And then mm. another person comes with 20,000 people. Whose message are they going to follow? Well, 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 listen. Bamun, I'm not, I don't want, if, don't provoke me on these attitudes because you know that Satan, Satan, Satan is a Greek word. Satan, it means the one who divides the people. Brother Jason, help wait, me. Wait, help wait, me. wait, wait. Satan is a Greek word, which means somebody who divides the people. Satan, do you know that Satan is more popular on earth? But what does that have to do with influence and numbers? It means, it means it's not fundamental to be an influencer because you have a lot of followers. It is important in life to learn to speak the truth. Haka Inde Chilemas won the Zambian hearts because he did not want to start cheating the people. For 15 years in opposition, that man used to say the same things that he is saying now. The Zambians now are convinced. Brother this Pombo. is... Um, Brother Pombo, can I ask a question? Can we say that uh, HH being honest... Uh, uh, became influential to Lua Zambian to vote for yes, it. Yes, that's it. That's the point, my boss. My katapo. Now you are talking. That's what we need. And we are talking about our country to change direction. We don't want any longer anyone to. We agree, brother Mpombo. That's what we also want. Okay, Mamda. Okay, Mamuna. Imuna, 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 We have to go and do our specialization in influencer, uh, media influence. Oro Mwamba Konombo Kulanda. Check the comments. People are disagreeing with you. You, but I hope you get the point, brother Oscar. You just I understand. I understand yes. what you are saying. You are talking about numbers. What I'm talking about myself is the uh, credibility and uh, to be genuine in life. 
And I, my young girls, my young boys, my nieces, nephews, my friends, I always emphasize on that. When I go to Zambia, do you know how many people they just come? Hello, you are back, please, hundred dollars. Hello, you are back, please. You, you are we moving with euros. And to help them, I don't give them a euro. I go, I buy some 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 gifts. We I help some families. I go and buy for the old person. I do not want to spoil them so that they think somebody who comes from the other side. So I don't want to be a simple influencer in my society. I don't want. I want my people to work extremely hard like Mr. Johnson, like you, yes. Mona. That's if, what I want. If you want to be an extraordinary influencer, you still have to have the numbers. Akawufi, be... Akawufi brings numbers. Ali, <laughs> Fochimbakambuidi. Okay, I, I give up. But Jason, I've given up. <laughs> Brother Jason, what's your take? Oh, <laughs> Natina. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make people understand here that somebody can use either Ubufi or being honest to influence them so that it becomes popular. Do you know that you can both by being a manipulator and also by being honest? But the different lies in Ubufi has got short legs and being honest it will take you a long way. And that's what we call in business like a goodwill. Goodwill. So you can use both manipulative power and also to be honest, actually to be, to be influential. Because at the end of the day, uh, depending on the individual's, uh, uh, individual's uh, values and moral fiber, they, they look at what am I going to use in order for people to, 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 to love me, in order for me to become popular. Like we can talk of uh, Bachimba Kamwiri. Bachimba Kamwiri looked at it, being from or castigating this particular time as a way maybe to depreciate the popularity of that other tribe so that people can become to love the other one. So what we can understand and what should uh, listeners understand is Ubufi ne Chinka both can be used to manipulate, to, to, to influence people actually and to make someone being popular. So it only calls for an individual actually who wants to own popularity. But one thing they should bear in mind is lies have got short legs. If you become honest in business, People are going to trust you. You are going to build that goodwill. Eh? These are the companies, actually, if it is in business, these are the companies that we are even seeing franchising because they trust Angry Lion. Eh? They trust McDonald's. Yeah? So, Apa, what we can advise by HH, if he wants to be influential, for Zambians actually to come and give him a vote, he need to be honest with whatever that is telling the Zambian people. Because what he should know, like you are saying, that this time around, majority Zambians actually are informed and they are able to access information. Nangubare ZNBC, people stopped watching ZNBC. Why? Because ZNBC became popular because of Ubufi. Ubufi. So we are saying both manipulation and being honest can be used actually to create popularity on the ground and to make an, an individual to be influential. I think that's what I can say. I don't know if you have... If Brother you have, Sakwimba has joined us, then we'll pass it over to Brother Oscar. So, Brother Sakwimba, welcome to the show. What's your yes, take on this CR1 uh, influence type of the question? Yes, Mr. Mona, how are you? Good, 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 good. Brother Oscar, how are you as well? Also, Brother Jay there, I can see you. Um, me, what I wanted to say 
Um, I also wanted to say the same thing what Brother Oscar said. Um, you know, you can influence people through lying. It's 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 okay to someone. It can be okay, but again, if you don't fulfill your your promise, again, it becomes a problem. It really becomes a problem. So. Yes, it's quite all right. You can, we can influence, like, things the way they are that now. Many people can influence uh, millions of Zambians, but, you know, Zambians, again, they are also so clever. You can't just influence them just for, like, as if you are playing fun or maybe you are doing what. So you can't influence people with lies. You just have to be honest with yourself. That's what I wanted to say, Mr. Mona. All right. Okay. So what's your take on the, the argument that we're having here with Brother Oscar with regards to neutralizing the power of, uh, you know, other people outside of Zambia? Uh, on that one, Mr. Mona, I wouldn't comment. <laughs> yeah, friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's my <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sleep well, Brother <laughs> brother Zakwimba. Anyway, uh, Brother Oscar, your take. <laughs> Um, I think Hakan, I have also understood um, your point of of um, of view, um, both you, Mon and and Jason. It's true when we talk about selling, especially in commercial, we use all means. You use all means. You know, I remember one word which um, 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 uh, this guy uh, with uh, H H who is that that short guy is uh, not not the spokesman Movita now. That, Movita, Movita now. now. Movita now. Movita now. Uh, when he was saying when he used to do the um, public speaking in the United States, he says, "Ah, what do I do?" Then he said, "Ah, to capture the attention of the people." He said, "Ah, let me just talk about. I'm going to explain to you. I come from a country where." Birds fly backwards. Okay? I am going to talk about a country. This country, Zambia, is a fantastic bird country. We have birds which fly backwards. So now the people, they open their eyes and say, oh my goodness, this country birds, they fly backwards. Then you portray your information and you capture them. That is okay. That is okay. I understand it, but I think the method that if you talk about um, the practice of influencing the people um, as object objectively, uh, you might be right, but I am talking about how to help also our people, our youth. Ma many of the youth, they are not going to accept what I'm saying. Many of the Zambian youth, girls and boys, Actually, they would even call, I can see some of the comments that are, that's odd style of life and this is odd, uh, you know. Some no, people they can don't... get your point if you had the influence. No, well, well, listen, Mr. Mona, at this point in time, it's like Umuntu Luele Malaria and we need to become cured. We need a bit of heal. We don't need influencing the Zambians. We need a bit of <clears throat> You to swallow, yeah, brother this Oscar. Our brother, brother Oscar, why do you think uh, uh, a lot of uh, big brands like Nike, Adidas use uh, popular players like Neymar, Ronaldo? Why do you think they pay them a lot of money? Because what they are after, all these, all, all that they are after, these people, you know, in business, like uh, all these shopping malls and things like that, they use these famous people to capture the attention of, because an individual, a famous individual has followers. So when, when here we use Ronaldo to drink just a cup of coffee and we want to propagate cafe and it's Ronaldo who is drinking that coffee, we are speaking to the millions of the followers of that individual. That is the idea. So they use these famous players or artists to capture their followers. That's the idea. We are talking about business, but I think myself, I don't want to talk about the business 
um, at, uh, well, move. Not, that, that's, that's not my comment. My comment was, um, I think on certain individuals to our youth, we have to open the youth's mind and, and we respect. Me, I respect each and every one. I respect, I respect Kaingu, Kaingu's idea of portraying her body and showing the body. I respect her, but that is not my life. And that is not the type of life I can suggest to my nieces and my nephews. I know, I hope you are going to, you following there. So business-minded, maybe Siawan, he's a very good guy. And if you use he, him, you use him to propagate your, 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 your um, uh, you know, uh, this, this platform, you might have very good numbers, Mr. Ramona. You are going to have very, very high numbers. But for me, I don't, uh, my life is not, I don't go for those numbers. I go for the quality. That's why I can distinguish between going for my degree course. I distinguish be between going for my degree course in Uganda than going for my degree course in England or in Italy. I distinguish because if I wanted, I would have gone to Uganda to Museven. I go to Museven, he's going to give me to become a, a genius because of the quality of the, the gentleman. But does that suit my, 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 my life, my style of life? No. So I cannot go and, 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 and graduate under Museven. Is, 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 is university. No, no. I would never go there. So that's what I'm trying to say. Gentlemen, me, I would not allow myself to comment on the, the country, another people, another country. Nigeria is a very, very good country. It's a very big country, uh, very good people. But some of the people, of course, they are, they are a little bit dangerous. Just today, Mr. Mona, just to tell you, a friend of mine uh, so, sent me a, a video where a doctor, the guy has graduated in, 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 in England. He has graduated in England, and yet he went back because in his country, it was easy to manipulate them and have this cheap cash. And un un fortunately enough, he was arrested by the police. And unfortunately, also the losses of lives of people, innocent people is also involved in this practice. So myself, I would go. I've been a Zambia hardworking. Let's go and buy Moody Shop, Yawa Johnson, Yawa Johnson, because it's a hard working. Let's come here on Z Corner because Muna is a hard working young man. That's what we want. And let's go and talk to HH because he's telling the truth to the Zambians. And when HH is going to, to, to make a mistake, especially concerning the mines, if our opposition, we will go to HH and you'll tell him. Bring back the minds to the Zambians, Mr. H.H. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, we've been going for three hours. Let's, let's conclude the stream now. <laughs> who's going to, you know, who's going to close? Gentlemen, feel free. Whoever wants to conclude, let's give our concluding remarks. Uh, yes, two minutes sir. each, then we conclude. Uh, it's, it's, it's been interesting, actually, tonight. I'm very happy. It's been a very provocative uh, discussion that we've had, actually. Uh, but the point that we should uh, put clear here is um, we shouldn't undermine, actually, the influence of whatever means people can try to use in order to lure, to lure the, the, the masses, actually, to love them, to have themselves popular to the masses. So all I'm saying is, um, for us actually, in order, in order actually, to eliminate some of these things that we are talking about tonight is, we just have to make ourselves popular. And how do we make ourselves popular? We need to lift the buzz, actually, the quality like you are saying. People have to see quality in us. We need to show the fellow youths out there to say, us on Z Corner, we are not all about that cheap capitalism whereby 
I'm trying to be a vuzela so that at the end of the day I'm paid the 10 kwacha. And if they begin to see much of the youths coming out like the way we are coming, Muna, Brother Muna, and the others, to say these guys actually they are doing this for the love of the country. It's the only way actually people will, will start following us no matter whatever, we don't need to, to tell them lies to say, follow us, listen to us, this is what we are going to do for you and the like. Us, I think as the, at Z Corner, it is all about giving people the right information, giving people what the, 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 the parameters they need to consider when they are choosing some leaders, giving people actually the right direction, the right mindset, so that at the end of the day, we are going to out of number which we have been for too long because if there is a country actually which is easily manipulated it is us Zambians because we don't take time to analyze to say why has this person said this what is he up to why is he saying that because like you are saying, like you are saying brother before, you are quite right to say we need to educate our people on the ground, the masses, the public, the, the, the public has to be educated. So that at the end of the day, whenever this person goes with manipulative, whatever means of convincing those the people to say, vote for us, they'll be saying no, because the last time you spoke about this and that, what has, what has a tribe got to do with our economy? Yeah? What has got to kufita kwa muntu has to do with our economy? People will be informed. Now, if we are just going to sit down as Zambians to say, let us keep quiet. Like one time, Brother Muna said that it's like we Zambian, we depend so much on divine intervention to solve our own problems. No, it is time that we should be speaking, especially the youths. We don't have to be covering ourselves or because of we are scared of the unknown. The problem, we are too scared as Zambians. We don't take risks. We don't want to take risks. That's why anybody, a, a sympathizer from outside can come to say, so the only way actually we can eliminate those is to keep talking like the way we are doing and keep supporting us. Don't think we are inclined to a certain political party because some people, they call us to say, no, you are cutters. We are actually patriotic Zambians, Zambians who are financially independent. You can make an intel, no one funds us. It is actually us who plans the ways and the means to say, how are we now going to start certain programs to reach the masses on the ground one-on-one? -on -one? So that... We started educating those people who are not privileged to listen to what we are broadcasting today. So, in my, to, to, uh, finally, I should say that we should be careful with the media because it's not everything we see on the media actually which is plain white. We need to analyze because most of the content that, uh, that is on the media it is in the grace. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Brother Jason. Brother Oscar, conclude for us. We call it a day. Uh, thank you very much. A uh, beautiful discussion indeed. And what I love is um, you express your opinion. I express my opinion. And we are feeling this freedom, this freedom of expressing our thoughts. And um, this makes us grow, actually. Uh, what I've learned in life is to learn from each and every person because even from wrong, wrongdoings, I've learned, I've learned something. But um, finally, it's me to uh, decide what is good for my life and, um, and for my future. So um, um, I will come um, to hear from different people, different um, opinions and uh, different orientations but also at the end, then I make my own uh, decision and I become responsible for my decision. I don't want tomorrow to cry file to say, well, I was deceived. Uh, that one I, I wouldn't want. So it's my encouragement also 
to the people who are listening to us. Um, I might not, I might differ from uh, another person's opinion or another person's um, uh, way of life, but um, well, that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm better than the others. I'm just different. Um, I, um, I, I would, um, I'm not going to be ashamed of expressing how I think. So I feel very, very free to do that. And I, I appreciate as it corner for the opportunity as well to express our views. Uh, we are, we appreciate that corner and, uh, and uh, Mr. Moon, I think I encourage you as well to stand your feet and, um, and, um, and provoke us as much as possible. That's very good. So to the Zambians, thank you. So also for tolerating sometimes our boring um, conversations, but I think we try and do the best and uh, contribute the little we can for the growth of our country and the nation at large. Thank you very much and uh, good night. Thank you very much, brother, uh, brother Oscar there. He does a great job being the opposition. So <laughs> we really thank you for keeping us on our toes. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a good night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we had for you today. We have been Z Corner. And I usually love uh, referring to, well, our, our platform as Idia Shidiya Panen Sonde, Reloaded in HD. Basically, what we do here on Z Corner is we talk about those things that you talk about privately, but we talk about them openly. And uh, we're just basically Ilya Shidapan and Sunday in HD and Reloaded, you know. So thank you very much for supporting us. I really hope you got one or two things from everything that we talked about. And I understand our live streams are super long. So our live streams are meant for people who are commuting, people who are working, because I know a lot of you don't like your jobs, you know. So when you're at work, plug in your earphones, your earbuds or whatever, watch the whole entire thing i understand a lot of you you like 15 seconds uh, 10 minutes but z corner we're here to talk about a lot of things and we've got like a variety of topics to talk about that's why our content is very long and that's that's these are the demographics we're trying to reach we're not trying to reach and I'm, I'm sorry to say this we're trying to reach people who can at least manage to consume a three-hour conversation. Three hours is nothing. It's just like a blip in your timeline and your life. If you can't comprehend a three-hour com uh, conversation, <laughs> you're not our demographic. We're not trying to give you cheap laughs and cheap information in, in one minute. Well, that's not the demographic we're trying to uh, cater for. We're, we're looking for people who can be able to hold a discussion, decipher things, have mature conversations, decipher everything from all angles. That's the top tier demographic that we want. So but of course, we'll try to do better next time. And by the way, we only do this like once in a while. We only broadcast three hours in a day. TV stations go 24 hours. ZNBC is up, I don't know, uh, more than 18 hours in a day. Z Corner is also a TV station, low key, a digital TV station. And we only broadcast for like three hours. Come on, give us uh, a break, you know. So anyway, uh, to all the people who are still watching us, you guys are champions. You guys are so, so amazing. Thank you very much. And I can see we've got about 94 shares. We need to have at least 110. So to all the people watching me right now, please, I can see there's 143 watching me on Z Corner Facebook. I can see you're seeing me hit the share button share it on your timeline and in five different facebook groups because it helps us get motivated how are we going to get rid of other people's influence we need to be influential how can we be influential by having a bigger audience having a lot of number of uh, viewers who are watching us on the live and who can help us do this you, the Zambians, if you're not really happy with foreigners talking about Zambian stuff and these foreigners have got a bigger audience, elevate your own, support us, share our videos, comment, like. How, how can you be complaining about foreigners saying, oh, I'm a foreigner, they are talking about Zambia and they are influencing and affecting us internally, but when it comes to your own people, you're not doing anything to support them. What is wrong with you? You need to support us. You need to share uh, uh, the videos that we're, uh, you know, all this effort that we're putting in and just, you know, uh, help us grow the movement. Uh, you know, I didn't really mean to but sometimes I'm too honest and uh, because, you know, sometimes you need to, uh, you know, go easy with people. And this is what I felt to do because I'm just, I'm very blunt. 
you know, I just go straight to the point and, uh, you know, I just tell it like it is. And uh, it's, it, I'm, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn to be nice and uh, sugarcoat stuff, you know, so that uh, I, I can appease everybody. But by the end of it all, oh, it's either you like me or you don't like me. I've got no problem with that. But if you want Zambia to maintain its sovereignty, if you want us to take charge of our own internal affairs, we need Zambian stars. We need Zambians to be able to like pull up or rather, you know, have 20,000, 30,000 live viewers. And we can't do it alone. I cannot do it alone. Jason cannot do it alone. Brother also can't do it alone. Brother Moses, we need your help. We need you. Every time you see my face pop up, every time you see Brother Jason, Brother Oscar, and all the regular degulars, you need to be sharing and, you know, propelling this uh, live stream to the next level. So right now, how many shares do we have at this particular moment? 114. A big round of applause to the people watching us right now. That's what we're talking about. So gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, whenever Z Corner comes up, you already know the deal. You already know the deal. And the other thing that I want to do is uh, um, we need to have uh, a very good um, sort of membership without having a membership. Am I making sense? We need to have uh, uh, people who know the agenda without necessarily writing on the dotted line. Whenever you see Zedkuna, just know what time it is. We do not need to have a signed agreement. You should just know the time we're on and the, the agenda that we have. Kambone Mutima, our pact is in our hearts. You understand? You already know Z Corner's agenda. You already know the program. We do not need to sign on the dotted line and say, okay, we'll be, whenever you see Z Corner, you already know what time we're on. You already know the agenda that we have and you have to support us. That's the type of uh, bond that I need to have with you, our followers. Whenever you see Z Corner, it's already game on because we're here, uh, you know, for the majority of Zambians. We want everybody to have an, an equal opportunity to do well in life. We're not selfish. We want everybody to live good at least. Let's, let's try. Let's try it. Each and every household can have a minimum of at least $1,000. Minimum. Look at our salaries. Look at the way our doctors are being paid. An average doctor makes $500. Multiply that by 12 months. That's like barely, barely $7,000 per annum. Our doctors, seven years in university. How can we change that? by elevating the bar and the level of leaders that we have. How can we do that? Information, influence. So whenever you see Z Corner, just know what time we are on. Just know that we are part of the agenda. We are part of the Z Corner agenda. We do not need to have conventions and all that stuff because Kambone Mutima, our contract is between you and I, dotted and signed in your heart. The power of thoughts. We're having a virtual contract between you and I. Our agenda is elevating the livelihood of Zambians. You understand? So help us uh, propel this message to the next level, and then we're going to be able to do what we can do uh, and just uh, improve. Anyway, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. It's been awesome seeing your lovely faces. I know a number of you don't even write and uh, uh, comment. A lot of you are just low-key observing. You're just observing in the background. I know. I really want to appreciate all, all the people that don't comment, they don't like, and they don't share, but they're always supporting us. I can see you. I see you. Thanks a lot. So uh, have a great night. Be blessed, and thank you very much. Talk to you tomorrow or probably the day after tomorrow. It depends on the, the news and the, the feeling. So God bless you, and uh, yeah, have a great night. Have fun. <laughs>